Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. I believe that God will do you good in Jesus name. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Now we ask you to stand for two reasons. One, you will receive a card almost immediately. There will be a group of people giving you a card. The first half belongs to you, contains information about the ministry. The second half is for you to complete. Please do so legibly and do so as soon as possible, most likely when you are seated. Please complete it and someone would be coming around to receive it. Once you are done, just let them know and they would come and pick the form. Please complete it so that it will enable us to know you more, to pray for you and um, to add you to our database. Praise the Lord. For those of you who have come with burdens, I assure you that you are watching your burden look at you for the last time. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a God in heaven, and that God will surprise you tonight. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Saints of God, let's stretch our hands to any direction where you can find someone visiting for the first time. Just speak words of faith. We are people favored by God. We are people anointed. And I want you to really believe. We are praying for you now. Father, lift them. Grant them access to your light. Grant them access to your power. For those following online from whatever nation of the world you're connecting from, in the name of Jesus, we agree with you that the Lord will do you good tonight. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, the Lord bless every one of you once again, and thank you for coming. Please sit. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12 just to admonish our hearts and we'll trust God for a very, very quick walk tonight. There's a lot to do. Hebrews chapter 12, we'll read from verse 22. Paul is speaking by the Spirit. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the Bible calls it the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly the church of the firstborn which are written in heaven to the God the judge of all and to the spirit of just men made perfect you are also come to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Now, every time we come, it looks to us like we're just coming to honor a program. But the Bible says where we are is called Mount Zion. And that there are several supernatural activities that happen there. And it's important for us to believe these things. The second scripture that I want us to look at very quickly is Revelations chapter 22 and verse 2. Please give it to us very quickly. Revelations chapter 22 and verse 2. Please pay attention and hold the person who will run now. The power of God is coming on one person who will start to run 
so that you can just hold the person down. This is what I just saw in my vision. Um, supernatural things happen because God is at work and everywhere the Spirit of the Lord is. The Bible says there is liberty. And so God knows how he visits his people. Our assignment is to open up the bowels of faith to allow the Spirit of God flow as he pleases. Revelation chapter 22. And for that person, it is a mighty already. It's liberty for that person. Verse 2. In the midst of the street of it. Please let me have your attention. And on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bear 12 manna of fruits and yielded her fruit how long every month from that tree every month there was a supernatural allocation that means what god did last month is not what he's doing today the bible says they bear 12 kinds and if he said it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness that means no matter what you have received you have not seen it in this manner and you have not seen it in this fashion 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruits every month and the bible says the leaves of that tree were for the healing of the nation i just want to admonish us for a few minutes and then we'll pray my heart is really heavy and I really, really believe that God wants to truly end certain things in people's lives and destinies once and for all. Hallelujah. The Bible lets us know that in Christ, please look up, we have been called to a life of victory. Please say victory. Scattered through scripture are the possibilities of the kingdom that makes for the victory of the saints we are not only called to love god we are not only called to serve god we are not only called to be used by god we are also called to be partakers of the victory that comes with this life it is important for you to understand that the dimension of our work with god that makes for victory is a possibility we must continually contend for until it is fully captured in our lives now thanks be to god the bible says that causes us always to triumph hallelujah the bible wants us to produce results in our lives john 15 verse 8 jesus is speaking herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit he says by so doing you will prove that you are my disciples when he saw the tree that had leaves but no fig the bible said in that scripture that the figs grow together with the leaves but this time around it had leaves and no figs and it cost it he said that no man will eat from you thereof hallelujah so god desires and, and it's important please listen very carefully we must never allow ourselves to be so used to suffering to be so used to pain now whether we suffer or not it should never interrupt our commitment and our love for god however god's design is not to serve him in suffering god's design is not to serve him in failure and defeat that is why when we serve him under that condition it means a lot because we were not designed that way are we together so we must continually contend to see the reality of the victory that is in Christ fully manifest in our lives. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit put something in my heart to just share with us and I want us to please pay attention. I have found out that I wrote something down here that I want to just quote and then I'll just discuss a few minutes and then we'll pray. Living in victory requires thinking victorious thoughts please understand this that there is a relationship between the victory that happens in a man's life and the quality of your thoughts and your understanding thinking like christ we call it it is not enough to believe god for miracles 
it is not enough to believe god for signs for wonders it is not enough to believe god to lift people out of burdens and yokes many believers do not pay attention to the quality of their thoughts their understanding and how it partners with darkness or partners with the holy spirit in establishing their victory i wrote this down and i want you to listen very carefully every challenge in this life has a mindset support system every challenge in this life has a mindset support system that means it has a thinking system that supports the arrival or the continuity of that challenge every challenge at all you will ever face in life has a mindset support system that means it cannot continue until there is a thinking that supports the activity of that spirit every challenge in life has a mindset support system that's a thinking system that is that supports the arrival of that problem and the continuity of that problem every victory in christ also in this kingdom has a mindset support system please understand this that both the tragedies that we experience in our lives and the victory that we receive as wrought by christ require a mindset support system the theology of victory is that all victorious living starts from the realm of the spirit routed in christ but then it will pass through the gateway of our thinking to find expression in the physical world this is very important nothing remains in a believer's life indefinitely until there is a mindset support system that allows it please listen to what i tell you whether it is poverty whether it is failure now it may not be caused by a mindset it may be an attack but the attack is at the mercy of the mindset support system a thinking system that will partner with darkness to keep that person indefinitely in that situation that means total victory is not just in praying for the sick it's not just in giving money listen it's not just in even getting people saved or born again total victory is when you allow the entire tripartite dimensions of a man to experience this victory number one that man must be in contact with the christ he's the basis of all victory are we together now number two the superior information that is based on scripture must be allowed to permeate that person's thinking let me show you a scripture that will bless you philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 paul is teaching the church in philippi and here's what he has to say finally brethren so he's talking to brethren those who are of the fold he says whatsoever things are true everybody say truth whatsoever things are honest say honesty whatsoever things are just say justice whatsoever things are pure say purity whatsoever things are lovely say love whatsoever things are of good report it says if there be any virtue and if there be any praise think on these things you are given the boundary as a believer to guard your mind that means that you have a responsibility to protect your mind to not vacillate indefinitely it is your responsibility now watch this satan is master of the flesh realm look up please the realm of the senses and the realm of the flesh is the domain of satan the flesh is generally defined number one as a nature and then number two a way of thinking that is alienated from the life and the character of the christ so when the bible talks of the flesh number one it means the nature of the fallen man but number two it means a system of thinking a theology of understanding that is not consistent with the character of the Christ and the Bible says to guard our minds very diligently please listen to me you will strangle any problem to death when it does not find a mind support system any challenge whatsoever is already on its way to expiry when your mind does not support its continuity whether it is poverty whether it is an attack whether it is a cause whatsoever it is 
so satan maintains continuity of darkness by number one allowing the spirit influences to manipulate the sense realm the things you see the things you hear are we together all of these sense realms they begin to create aberrated views they may be real from the third dimensional realm but the bible says while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen you can look at the things that are unseen why because the things that are seen are temporal the word temporal means subject to change there are conditions that can allow that thing change there is no end to the trouble that will come to a believer's life who does not construct his thoughts and his understanding to reflect christ any problem listen let me tell you this now please don't feel insulted we have medical people here and i learned that the way what we call hiv are we together the virus the deadly virus i and i was told one time by a doctor he was telling me how it works he told me hiv itself is not a sickness are we together hiv is a state is a medical condition a biological condition that is aimed at weakening are we together now the strength the support system so it kills the support system of the body down not just the white blood cells it it shuts down everything that has the fortitude of creating strength and defense in the body so that any sickness even if it's malaria can kill you this is how a mindset is a mindset works like hiv a mindset is a universal invitation for any trouble to be to part of, that means it is a ready participant any tragedy you are welcome the thing that i feared most have come upon me job said please listen so satan uses fear number one satan uses the negative testimonies of others who are like you you are in a situation with another person and he says you see how my life is how is your own experience and while you are standing in faith you look at him and you say we are the same we are age mates the same region and so i should not act stupid and you begin to dance to the music of the flesh the moment you allow your thinking to go outside the boundary the provisions allocated by the word of god just know that you are already in partnership it's another kind of koinonia too the moment your mind is thinking wrong you just started a service but that service now is not under the influence of the holy spirit it's a partnership with any kind of tragedy that will eventually find finally brethren in addition to all that i have told you in addition to the systems that guarantee victory in the kingdom they are all nonsense if you ignore this whatsoever things are true and now you see i've taught you this again and again we live in a society that is negative by default are we together you annoy people when you are happy you annoy people when you are joyful you sing a song of praise and everybody is frowning and say are you the only person in this world see so we are trained to be negative the moment you are negative you become sympathetic to humans apostle you are talking like this because you've not lost any loved one apostle in the last one month my life has gone haywire finance went down and everything went down the bible says rejoice in the lord always and again it is not an encouragement it's a warning it's a precaution no matter what happens guard certain things including your joy because joy is responsible for strength joy is responsible for harvest two things you need in your life when you lose harvest you lose strength and you lose the fortitude for harvest you are finished so we continue to embrace a negative disposition and let me tell you this every time you search for trouble and a reason to be angry in your life you will find it at whatever level even if you don't find it the devil will help you to sympathize for other people that have no business with you it is true that you can cry 
it is true that you can be in pain it's true that your humanity can relate to something that brings you pain but it's a choice you are going to have to choose that i guard the boundaries of my mind please never forget this teaching that's why there are people no matter what kind of deliverance happens to them the devil is more than glad to leave them because he knows he will be back shortly it's like you take a little break in transmission mass communicators when they talk they say okay we now go on a little transmission that's what deliverance is for many people because the devil knows that inevitably there is a, a belief system that has become almost an eternal support system for him are we together it is the reason why there are dimensions of deliverance that are preached not conducted to preach deliverance to the captives do something to their belief systems so i've said that every challenge in life has a mindset or requires a mindset support system a thinking system that supports both the arrival of that problem and the continuity of that problem complaining a mindset murmuring a mindset being did you know there are people for instance come my dear watch this there are people that can stand god can do 30 things wonderful things and then just one challenge a headache trouble some challenge in the job place and they will act as if god never blessed them in this life let me tell you that kind of thinking you will gain a lot of acceptance but you will suffer indefinitely the choice is yours it's amazing how sometimes we complain as though god has never shown us his faithfulness we complain as if god has never given you a dream we complain as if god has never granted you favor we never we trivialize the salvation that we have we trivialize the good friends he's given us we trivialize access to truth even though you have not received the truth you have access to it already Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 that the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus you must intentionally acknowledge every good thing apostle I have big head what about other part of your body have you celebrated God's faithfulness for it you, you see how negative we are apostle every month malaria typhoid they, we won't it won't it kill me you see that's partnership and when you continue saying it you will invite a spirit that has no business coming to your domain remember the, the, i've taught you this the law of consistency the spirit will say someone is calling me and he will come and say what's going on here and your complaint continues to allow it tabernacle with you i will never say anything negative about myself let critics say it not you are we together mm. someone once told me and said apostle you love yourself i said what's the meaning of that i love myself why will i want somebody to love what i hate are we together you hate yourself and you want someone to love you that's why all this fantasy of hanging yourself writing a letter write no letter to nobody <laughs> oh i'm tired of this life and things are you know and you just hang yourself it's a foolish way of dying it's better to serve god and be martyred or do some or serve society hang yourself and, and waste bodies are we together yes this is an admonishment we're going to pray this night is a very serious night so many of us continue to partner with demons remember i taught you what um apostle paul said he said the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith are we together and that they will give heed to seducing spirits 
not just demonic spirits seducing spirits and i've taught you that the character of seduction is that seduction cannot work until it finds something that you are vulnerable to if you are not hungry the seduction towards gluttony cannot work if you don't like women the seduction towards women cannot work if you don't like power the sedu so seduction studies you it studies your goals it studies your visions it studies your desires it studies your aspiration and it builds an attack based on that information that's how seduction works or if it does not find anything it studies what god is doing and creates a system there when seduction knows that isaac is coming it will put hagar close by so that you now bring ishmael who will fight with isaac and punish the nations seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons are we together yes you must make up your mind that this life of refusing this life of seeing negative things let me tell you this world is whatever you say it is there are people right now their viewpoint of the world is a place of bomb blast boko haram wickedness selfishness and they are right and it will become because whatever adam called it that was the name thereof are we together yes you call yourself things god did not call and there are people this world no matter how negative it is they choose to see what god is doing they choose to see the god that lifts they choose to see a destiny that is bright they choose to see a life that insists until god is glorified it will always be unto you according to your faith hallelujah most bitterness that happens in our world are as a result of people who feel miserable about themselves and they are not satisfied being miserable alone they will continue to make sure that others join them in feeling miserable with all that is happening in the world god is still on his throne and there is joy unspeakable in heaven full of glory jesus only wept on earth he would not cry again there is no reason for him to cry again are we together so you must make up your mind we are going to pray shortly people will be healed be delivered god is going to be lifting people but let me tell you these experiences will never last in fact for some it will never happen until you trust god today and say this negative sadist devilish antichrist kind of partnership that i continue to provide with challenges in my life there are people who look wrinkled you almost think they are 50 until they tell you i'm just 27 you say it's a lie are you sick no but i said the way the world is who is fine don't talk like that please take seriously what i tell you your victory is not only tied to christ alone it's tied to your understanding your mind is very creative but it's also obedient In my world i see victory i really do i really do in my world i see the life and the power of god in my world i see christ glorified in my world i see lives being changed in my world i see the the powers of darkness continually dislodged in my life i see longevity listen very carefully in my life i see prosperity in my life i see an opportunity to serve the purposes of god with my life forever in my life i see continuous triumph i have taken out time by the word of god and by the spirit to make that understanding become a stronghold in my mind are we together in my mind i see power and anointing someone someone once asked me and said apostle is it that god tells you he's going to move in a meeting what gives you confidence and i said god me and history <laughs> history history is the basis for mastery i don't try to have faith in god when he will move we've left that level i know i trust him it's a realm of koinonia oneness certainty 
certainty let me show you something Luke chapter 1 please give it to us Luke chapter 1 we'll read the first three or four verses look up please for as much as many have taken in hand to set in order the declaration of those things which are mostly secured believe are most surely believed among us verse 2 even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses listen and ministers of the word verse 3 it seemed good having had what perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent theophilus what is the purpose verse 4 that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed they are not cunningly vice fables the goal of writing this to you is that i was an eyewitness to these things and i want to write to you so that i solidify and clean up any gray areas that might make you doubt the certainty of what you have received this is dr luke writing to theophilus and telling him what is going on that means so that when you stand to declare a thing you are not hoping in the secret you are right the certainty of these things when you say god lifts and god can change lives as a preacher you are you are a funny preacher if you don't believe it how then does the power flow power does not just flow through your hands it flows through your understanding It's very important you you know this are you getting what i'm saying the certainty of those things so you must walk on your mind philippians chapter 2 same philippians notice that paul paul seemed to drum it in this church in philippi this issue of mindset chapter 2 and verse 5 he now encourages the saints let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus he's teaching here that for you to establish victory in your life you must allow the mind to be in you there was an understanding that jesus had there was a belief system that jesus had any trouble is frustrated when your mind does not partner with it every victory that comes from christ is also frustrated when you do not have a mindset requirement poverty depends on a mindset to stay infirmity depends on a mindset to stay causes and yokes and all kinds of things depend on a mindset to stay i think it was a preacher one time i don't know where i heard this um but there was a preacher one time who um spoke about is it the 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 elephant that is used in a circus how that they would chain the elephant or something like that and then it was used to a rope being tied and it was limited and that because of the it, it was already used to it one time they even removed the rope and the elephant would not go past that because it, the rope has been tied in his mind the worst way to bind people is to bind them in their minds when i bind you in your mind i can lose your hands you are in a bigger prison are we together so you must learn to stand in faith with god and believe with him some of you may have never received properly the miracle service because you are hoping that you will come and watch others get blessed would you leave such a distance to just come and clap for others there is a level of insistence the woman with the issue of blood said if i may but touch the hem of his garment she kept rehearsing before the arrival of jesus blind Bartimaeus said all of you have eyes i have an eye too but i can't see and if jesus is passing around let me just hear the sound of jesus and i will cry thou son of david have mercy on me there is a level of insistence that will force darkness to go are we together tonight so i want you to believe listen let me tell you this it is powerful when the power of god flows in and to and through a mindset that has been so constructed you will see the potentials of the life of god we have many destructive belief systems that continue to short circuit the power of god you can pray for a lady like this for instance 
in the name of Jesus may God give you a great life partner but she already has a destructive mindset that will never even allow the life partner see her her mindset has become darkness a depraved selfish unspiritual mind full of low esteem which God's son will see that kind of that kind of um, scenario and be glad to come and marry and there are men with self-centered self-destructive attitudes so listen you have a responsibility and this is the part of the gospel that i think we must balance in church the gospel that continues to say god is exclusively responsible he is responsible for betting the victory but you are responsible for partnering for the transfer and the manifestation to happen in your life it is true and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped the vessel in this case can be your mindset the vessel in this case can be your understanding is god speaking to us tonight someone can be here and you can make up your mind and say lord from january till october i thank you but i've not seen the prophetic word you've given me i'm insisting that this night is not only my night of reception it's my night of recovery and that by next miracle service i'm only coming to testify and clap for others i i name today as the day of my salvation hallelujah yes god is able the bible says it now unto him ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 who is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all we ask or think not ask or sing ask or think and then it says according to the power not lives in him the power allowed to walk in us the power allowed to walk in us god's power is like a dam the one allowed to walk in you is like the the opening of the tap you can open a tap so small that it brings water drop by drop you have short circuited the potential of the dam the dam is misrepresented by the allowance that the tap gives are we together so god wants to bring us to a point where he will move us into dimensions of grace dimensions of victory now thanks be to god now thanks be to god now thanks be to god what does it take for god to change a family listen let me tell you this look up don't get used to pain and don't get used to failure continue to insist until your life reflects christ this is this is where the labor of a believer is in the spirit your insistence until the things that you now see become the things you do not see insistence lord it is not your will for this family to be in poverty begging from hand to mouth anointed but begging anointed but begging anointed but begging every good thing that happens in the family you receive it with fear because you know it will not last and you are right it will not last because it was only received momentarily it was not sustained by a requisite level of mindset that will keep it whatever your mind holds is yours forever truly whatever your mind holds is yours if your mind holds trouble is truly yours if your mind holds victory it is yours are we together so you must insist this night there are all kinds of things god wants to do listen let me tell you this very quickly in a miracle service god does many things a miracle service is not just a healing service a miracle service is a service that allows for the power of god to birth and sustain supernatural solutions everybody say supernatural solutions solutions whose origin and operation is higher than the realm of men it truly is stupid for an individual to sit down and start asking can god change my life in one day can god change my life in two days can god turn my family before november god yeah. 
Are we together? Are you guys done? Have you fixed it? It's not working. Okay, so please, let's work on it as fast as we can. Make up your mind that my life must become an expression of the beauty and the glory of God. Make it a project. It doesn't matter where you are now. Make up your mind that my family must become a reflection of the beauty and the glory of God. As at the time you are speaking, you may not have where to live. As at the time you are speaking, there's no food even at home now to eat. Don't worry. Stand in faith. Don't fake anything. There's no need faking anything because there's no need faking what can be real. You've heard me say. There is no point faking anointing. There is no point faking power in ministry. You can stand and say, Lord, as it is right now, my church looks like a place where people just stop to drink water because of how powerless it is. But Lord, let something from heaven come upon my church. And I stand in faith and I believe with you. Everybody you pray for is not healed. Everybody you speak over is not changed, but no problem. You stand and look at your siblings and nobody in that house looks like the future. Everybody looks like the past. Stand in faith. I refuse to give my, the, my mindset as a donation. Everybody in your family is not married. Everybody in your family has no children. Don't partner with the devil. They have all donated their mindsets. Be the last key that will refuse Satan. And say, no way. If God is finding hope in this family, let my mindset be the gateway that allows God to come in. Please hear what I tell you. Not elder sister, no child. This one, no child. You two, you have been married how long? Say two and a half years. Say year. All of us are the same. You, have, you are the last card that God is depending upon to become the doorway for his power to come. And now the devil is tricking you through frustration to donate your mindset. If everybody in your family is failing, you can stand and say, Lord, find one doorway that can allow you remember there is no miracle until there is at least five loaf and two fish you have to give god something the five loaf will allow other loaves come hallelujah i never think failure i truly mean it i'm not just talking i never think defeat i believe i'm victorious I live in the consciousness of the jealousy of God over my life. It's true. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. And I have drawn you with my loving kindness. It's not just scripture to me. It is life. It is God revealing his intent to me. This ministry will never go down. It will continue to be from glory to glory. It's true. No, 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 no. I, I'm being as honest and modest with you as, as possible because retrogression has an explanation you can explain why things deplete you can explain why things retrogress and you can explain why things will remain afloat regardless of what happens hallelujah you are here tonight in this place in the presence of god you are here tonight many of you have traveled from several nations some of you have traveled from different places to come please hear me my brothers and my sisters the first miracle that god is doing tonight is calling your attention to the partnership that your thought life would have been creating with the devil we call all kinds of nonsense hakanea laashiria does it look like god if you were god is that how you will walk are we together now you must insist and say no this is not the character of god this is not the best of god god cannot bring 11 children to be scrounging from hand to mouth and the only employed person in that family is earning fifteen thousand. god is not wicked something is wrong the moment you call darkness darkness then light can fight it when it has to do with dealing with issues don't be ashamed don't be afraid to stand on god's side are we together so a miracle service allows the multifaceted dimensions of god's power to find expression some of you are here trusting god to break and crack down yokes of infirmity once and for all but do you believe do you agree with god apostle i'm ss 
this thing will never change it will be unto you according to your faith apostle i know i'm just here but no problem they will lay hands on me but that that persuasion is not yet there apostle i believe god will prosper me but in your mind you are looking at that class you are looking at um the fact that your only uncle that had access to bail all of you out died last year and you say it has finished no apostle there have been too much delay in my life by now i should be at this level at this level but restoration is possible let your mind open that door see when you know who god is you don't, there is no fear and regret in your life because the bible says for we know the rest don't know but we who are in the kingdom and are aware of the systems of advantage provided for by god in christ we know that in a believer's life there is nothing that is really a disadvantage it's true if you were employed as a graduate in 2000 by now you most likely with diligence and service minus corruption and wickedness you probably would be a director by now are we together yes and now you've not even gotten a job so if you get a job now most likely you are over age already they will not employ you and so you can sit down and say this thing self i'm dead is finished it's over because you have given god you have told god how to move in your life and not allowed him move how he wants to move god if it's must you move this way and god says i want to do more than you can imagine and he will have to make do with the allowance that your mindset allows him but someone can say lord i'm tired of allowing you to pass through my life only through salary thank you for salary but el shaddai where are you answer my family That is the day you will see what will happen one day and it will look to you like a dream someone will call you and say the lord instructed me to transfer 30 million to this family you say please tell the fcc before you talk to me Let, let's just be sure you are genuine and they say god instructed me and i'm obedient then you will now know that the testimony of others are not a lie pain can make you think everyone is lying did god really step in like that did god really anoint you like that hallelujah expect god to step into your family expect god to step into your life expect god to put favor upon you the reason why people succeed in this life the favor of god is true expect it life by default and without the assistance of god is impossible to live it's not hard it's impossible you will never be able to walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity and live life as it should be unassisted by god no so he interjects your life with different systems of advantage like mercy like favor like speed like restoration all these things are divine forces that work together to make your life become what the word of god says should become so a woman here for instance who has been barren say for six seven years now if god gives you one child that's good news but that's progress not restoration because you will still have to wait three years get pregnant again wait three years get pregnant you must add 12 years to have the four children so god gives you triplets in nine months now that one is no longer progress that's restoration he has brought nine years spacing in nine months are we together god calculates your salary like arias and brings it through favor in one transfer god shifts you to a level of anointing that you should have walked in had it been your uncle allowed you to be diligent attending church serving in the house of god there are certain levels in the spirit you would have walked in right now but because he stopped you and clamped you down and things didn't look like they were working many things just went down in your life and because of that watch this because of that you got grounded and could not know god fast and god can lead you to an uncommon mentorship an uncommon anointing in six months you will receive a grace that is 15 years old <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> jacob collected 
Esau's birthright. He didn't know that Esau was supposed to suffer seven years. When he collected his birthright, Esau's own plus, his own, he served 14 years. It's not about exchanging of women. It's destiny playing out. Their family had delay. I hope you know. From Abraham, it was a challenge. So both of the sons individually, whether they was collecting birthright or not, they would have paid their seven years. Watch this. But Jacob collected Esau's. It only played out using women. But it still played out. That means you can collect someone's speed too. You see that? It's true. Sit down. Please sit down. You can come with a load that is supposed to be 10 years according to the normal sequence of occurrence based on the allowance your family gives and you come under the influence of a covenant that forces your life to look like the grace upon that territory it's true find a way of believing what i'm saying i've shown you luke chapter one to tell you the certainty of these things it is not those who like you that bless you alone it's those who are directed for everybody to like you do you know how long it takes to like a man sometimes you just need to hear god and obey fast your life requires speed hallelujah there are times because of what god wants to do in your life when he finds out that four people need to be blessed to reach you whether they are praying or not he will hurry them quickly because they are delaying you he will hurry them for your sake when you come for a meeting like this be conscious of four things number one be conscious of every prophetic word that comes relating to your issues of concern be conscious of it when these words come don't think they are just empty speakings the carnal man cannot discern the things of god the word of god is like a tray you have to receive the tray before you receive what is on it are we together now the word of god is a tray it carries miracles carries deliverance carries healings so when you receive the word the engrafted word you now take what is in it be conscious of the prophetic word number two be conscious of the covenant covenant is a very deep spiritual word many people just shout covenant around but they don't even know what it means listen a covenant is a system that commits god and causes him to vow to ensure that a person or an institution continues to receive certain predictable outcomes it's a covenant there is the covenant of answered prayer there is the covenant of god's presence there is a covenant of results every man that god truly calls and every ministry that god truly ordains there are underlying spiritual covenants the platform upon which god put his vow and his integrity that has touching this and this i will make happen it's true also be conscious of the graces you see that the graces that are available within that territory you cannot receive a man's covenant you can only partake of it but you can receive graces you are a pastor you come and your church is grounded you only have 50 members during your annual thanksgiving thank god for that but something is wrong god is a god of increase you can come with hearts open to receive the grace how about hardship things not working well how about your spiritual growth you are at the same level for five years the knowledge of scripture zero health of your prayer life zero you are a man of god and nobody is placing a demand on the grace of god that you have it will frustrate you eventually but there are graces every possibility in the kingdom is governed by an operation of grace when that grace comes upon your life your result shows thou anointest my head with oil the result shows through my cup he does not anoint your cup he anoints your head your cup proves what is on your head are we together now so this is very important thank you 
And you have to understand the way this works. We are going to pray shortly. And I need you to know how this works. I want you to receive. Be conscious of the graces. Not, some of you may not, need, may not need a miracle, like miracle from sickness or whatever. But understand that when you come, it's like an exchange of graces. Listen, the Bible says, give us please, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Please give it to us quickly. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. Praise the Lord. Read with me, please, Koinonia. Ready? One to read. Stop. 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 God is able to make all grace. Let me explain that to you. Please, all of you, come. Stand anywhere you want to stand. Just stand anywhere. Scatter yourself around. Don't come close to me. Just stand. Watch this. Call these guys graces. The grace for prosperity. The grace for favor. The grace for speed. The grace for spiritual fire. The grace for influence. Watch this. Access to the hearts of men. This is you. This is your destiny. And the Bible says the way we advance is that we need to be in touch with all graces not some i can have the grace for prosperity and i'm rich but i suffer but i succeed you are rich but no man helps you because you don't have favor you only have prosperity the proof of favor is not money is the loyalty of men if you do not have access to the hearts of men you don't have favor you may have resources so this guy has prosperity so he will labor, wake up in the morning, sleep late in the night, eat the bread of sorrow, mix it with hard work and eventually prosper. But as far as spiritual fire is concerned, the grace that plants in a man, the hunger and the passion for the things of God is not in him. So that grace is not there. He has some, but not all. And the part, the grace dimension he does not have, the deficiency of it will show in his life. He is getting richer, but not as his soul prospers. This is the grace he needs. When you pray and intercede for this man now, God will answer your prayer by channeling him to a ministry or a man of God that has this dimension. So that in addition it will be added to him. Are we together now? Now listen very carefully please. Look up everybody so god is one of the things that happens here is that the spirit of god continues to move like a wind and he scans your life which grace do you need in this season that you do not yet have this is one of the biggest miracle that happens in a miracle service most people do not know you sit under this atmosphere and there is an updating it's like a software god finds out that this level you are entering into there are at least 21 graces but as it is there are only four so while the meeting worship is going prayer is going there is an upgrade that grace so here's what the bible says god is able to make hold my hands so you come for koinonia miracle service dry nothing is on your head and nothing is around your life too because what is around you is a is a report card telling what is on you are we together now you obtain the grace that makes for abundance for the sake and the grace for wealth that works in this ministry forces you to love god while you are wealthy if you receive a grace that makes you wealthy and as you are rising in wealth you are leaving god that anointing did not come from this ministry the grace for this ministry has been it has been edited to a covenant to ensure that as men rise their hearts also rise for god not the kind of nonsense money that makes you leave god you don't honor anything that has to do with god again no it is as you prosper even as your soul prospers it's babylon that gives wealth that prospers you and diminishes your soul watch this so you receive this grace and then the holy spirit finds out grace for what favor come watch this praise and worship you got this one during praise and worship you didn't even know why you felt like falling you just thought that ah the song was so nice something had landed on your head are we together now this is speed hold me now my dear watch this this is what is happening in koinonia you are sitting down but you just know that there is a weight that glory something is coming on you you can't tell you are not even falling 
you are not shouting you will look at someone shouting and feel bad and feel like i i wish i'm the person falling whereas the holy ghost is doing very serious things and then access to the hearts of men this is your package for miracle service now you receive this watch this we now share the grace watch this watch this remember you traveled from another nation the uk us kenya wherever and then you just came and at the end of the service satan can even fool you you are from kenya oh i see please sit down madam i see how it's a kenyan uh, god bless you now watch this you can receive this and while you receive it they will share the grace and you will still feel like nothing came on you but you see the exam is not marked in church go out listen please koinonia understand what i teach you and god is able you came for a meeting and you carried this in two days someone who forgot you no listen he does not just remember i've taught you this last week a book is open in the realm of the spirit by reason of the grace that you carry watch this in one week a strange grace for illumination you think hold on you think is the spirit of revelation it's not revelation it's speed it's just that speed demands revelation there are graces when you carry they call others too so that they will work well in your life and god is able god is able god is able there are people because of the graces you carry you will sustain the grace to fast for three days for one week remember that was a condition god gave you to allow your spirit allow him do certain things but the fortitude to fast that long was not there so the grace comes and while you wait upon the lord 10 years immediately is released within one month listen if all you see is just physical healings and deliverances you are not seeing well the major part of what calls listen one of the major reasons why god sends people from other nations and other places to this place is number one to be able to stand by the grace he has provided for to solve their problems but more than that to expose you to ancient mantles these are graces that were there by covenant listen there is nothing i carry that is as old as me everything i carry is older than me by far we are only stewards the grace predates us it's a relay we are running others ran it and god added on it and gave us to hold it for a generation To know the certainty of the things whereof you have been instructed please hear me if you believe what i share with you tonight you will marvel and you will wonder you can choose tonight to agree with god that every challenge except it does not have a name that in this place this night god will bring it down we are going to have like 10 minutes of serious prayer now listen please during that time of prayer forget about who is by your left and right forget about me just stay with god and pray passionately for the next 10 minutes lord i came for an encounter i came to receive healing i came to receive deliverance but i came to also attach myself to covenants i came by the spirit to receive graces outside inside online lift your voice and pray be restoration please bring them out quickly 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 let's save time please in the break take it to Sheila Qatar restoration now I speak it by the spirit the power of God is still coming on people recover recover 
by the spirit recover i stretch my hands recover by the power of prophecy recover recover years lost recover opportunities a paris recover in the mighty name of jesus i decree and declare god is bringing recovery let me tell you you will marvel and wonder that the things you thought has left you you are about to find it waiting for you in your tomorrow i speak to you may that grace come upon you now again recovery 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 restoration i want to take authority over the spirit of delay i'm seeing many people your feet is chained in the spirit you want to make progress but you cannot make progress fire is falling from heaven now i decree and declare inside outside all the overflows anyone under the sound of my voice who is under the influence of the spirit of delay at the count of three may fire from heaven fall upon those chains one two three i break those chains now be free now from delay be free now be free now be free now i will hasten my word to perform it i will not just perform it i will give speed to my word the word is quick and powerful i declare again any family here any individual under the yoke of delay i speak to you by the spirit that yoke is broken now that yoke is broken now broken by the spirit hallelujah now i want to pray please listen i have prayed this prayer and for those of you who have missed it in time past may god grant you the grace to receive it now listen truly speaking there is a grace for speed please hear me a man's lifetime cannot allow the fullness of the purposes of God to be birthed. Some of you gave your life to Christ late already in life. It's not enough to rebuke delay. You must obtain the grace for speed. And watch this. I'm about to pray for people now. And that anointing is coming on people. As usual, you find people running by the spirit. But I need to release that anointing. Father, I stand under heaven in this miracle service. There are people who have traveled from several nations and several territories at the count of three for you and for your family. That dimension of speed where 10 years can be put in one year. I declare right now, let it come upon you. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Speed. Parush Kabarakata. Speed. Career speed. I give speed to your life, speed to ministry. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Speed. Hello, Madonna. Hallelujah. Mommy. Please look at me, ma. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know you, but I'm seeing strong witchcraft over your family. Where are you coming from, madam? Madam, I'm looking at you. I'm seeing River State. Where are you from? States. Huh? States. River State. Yes, sir. The Lord says I should tell you that from this night, things will change in your life. She's your mother. Help that woman, please. I'm looking at the Lord in the spirit. I'm putting my hand inside a river. And I'm bringing something out. And the Lord says it's the destiny of this family. In the name of Jesus. That's the daughter. I command by the spirit. Every planting that is not of the Lord. I overturn and I uproot now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is Naomi? 
I'm hearing a name Naomi. We have to hurry up. I want to pray for the sick. Naomi. Hello, Kim Madonna. The Naomi I'm talking about is outside. Where are you coming from? Come, stand. Your name is not Naomi. Is your name Naomi? What's your name? Come, stand. Where are you coming from, my dear? UK. From where? UK. I want to pray for you. Your name is Naomi. Come and stand. We have to hurry up. Hold on. I cancel CS. I, Madam, look at me. I stretch my hands now. I cancel CS by the Spirit of the Living God. And I decree and declare, like the Hebrew women, you will give birth. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm saying it again. I correct what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. This is what doctors say a baby is breached. In the name of Jesus, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I correct it now. May you give birth normally like the Hebrew women. In Jesus' name. Let me pray. Are you married? You are backing a baby. Where is the baby? I'm looking at you in a vision. That's why I'm saying, oh, how can this? You know, I'm saying, you came to Koinonia. You are backing a baby outside. This is the vision. I'm... You are not getting what I'm saying. Is this? You were backing this baby when I mentioned your case. Yes. Huh? Yes, were you backing a baby? Yes, That's why I'm saying, are you married? Because you look too small to be a married woman. This is the real person I want to pray for. Bring this little baby. God is, I don't know whose child is this your child but god this lady you see is going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of god she looks like a little girl in the name of jesus what's her name nicole, nicole. she may not know what we are doing but we stand in the presence of the people of god we anoint this lady may she become a deborah to her generation in the mighty name of jesus christ my dear let me pray for you. Where are you from? Kogi State. I want to pray for you. Huh. Immediately she mentioned Kogi State. I saw what I used to see now. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing the power of God going to Kogi State. Kogi State. I'm praying now. It's a sign and wonder. Every time I see that, if you are from that locality, the power of God comes on you immediately. In the name of Jesus, I command witchcraft associated with that territory. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Hallelujah. Who is Magdalene? Magdalene, my dear, come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I anoint you. There is grace. You look young, but you are going to be a mother to men. This is what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord anoint you and make it so. My dear, I rebuke the hand of witchcraft now. Release her. I'm seeing chains on you. I declare by the Spirit, release this lady now. I'm about to minister deliverance shortly. Release her now. In the name of Jesus. Please bring someone in overflow too now. A lady. The power of God is coming upon that lady. Now as I speak, overflow too. Mighty fire of God is coming. Please bring her quickly. We have to save time. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Come, my dear. The grace that we want to make married men disturb you. Look at me. I come against that spirit now. Not only you. There are five other people I'm seeing. I don't know where they are. 
but in Jesus name there is a like like it like an almost like an evil anointing that makes only married people to look for you Parus Kamana Hashileketa in the name of Jesus by the God of heaven I lift that negative thing off your life now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I hear the name Magdalene I don't know if Magdalene I want to pray very quickly we have to pray for the sick you are the covenant keeping you can Jesus. I decree and declare by the spirit of the living God I'm seeing your feet in mud in the name of Jesus I lift you out of this tragedy by the power of the Holy Spirit and I speak to this lady I'm seeing this lady but all I'm seeing is snakes completely I declare be free now by the spirit of the living God the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty be free right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost let me pray for you my dear grace for you the favor that is on your life I command it to start speaking it will not only be a name that is on you it will speak right now in Jesus name your sister your name is Magdalene come in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord bless you Look at me. The Lord is taking away shame and reproach from your life. These two things. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Please stand up. I speak to you by the God of heaven. The month of November, a big miracle is coming to your life. A big miracle. I lay my hands upon you and I declare in the name of Jesus, be free right now. Why is this girl here? This Magdalene? come my dear I pray for you place your hand on your head I declare oh God let this chain be taken now I'm seeing a chain on this girl's head be removed now be removed this like the devil wanting to just bring this lady under captivity I remove it right now in the name of Jesus Christ somebody lay your hands on her so anybody just touch her release her now by the spirit of God there's no place for you take everything that belongs to her restore it and go now now please listen I want to minister deliverance please believe it you may not know the woman from Kenya come it's time for God to change your life please stand up when did you come here uh, yesterday yesterday yes. you came here God is about to turn your life around Amen. Glory. you are still coming and you are coming with four people the next time you are coming Amen. Thank you, Jesus. madam what do you do what do you do? I'm a commissioner for human rights. Commissioner for human rights yes. in Nairobi. Yes. In, in two weeks, I'm going to be in your nation. I would like to see you, Amen. your nation. There is a reason why I'm talking. I'm not seeing you alone. I'm seeing four other people yes. that the Lord wants me to pray for. Amen. But I want to pray for you, madam, because I don't know if you believe it or not, you have a political destiny. As you are like this looking at me you have a political destiny in Kenya and God by his spirit is going to make this happen but another thing is there is also the call of God upon your life you are a woman that love God there is is starting like an intercessory grace and a prophetic grace but you will get to a point where among the graces God will give you is the grace to pray for barren women notice this grace 
God is going to bring this grace upon you. God, I'm also seeing you build a charity foundation. There is going to be a mighty humanitarian foundation that I see you build. I'm seeing foodstuff and I'm seeing different things. First, it will have to do with young girls, people who have been abused and so on. But I see it not only that, I see women too. Women, God is going to increase your influence. I lay my hands upon you and I declare by the Spirit, carry this grace. Go to Kenya with it, go and excel. I command the two lift gates of Nairobi and the entire Kenya to be open for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, go with this anointing, go and prosper. May the Lord multiply your political career and may the Lord prepare you for the mighty ministerial assignment he has for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. An angel of the Lord is standing here. Someone will shout here under a strong anointing. I just saw that grace. I don't know. First, I think until the shout happens, I know why God, just from here right to the back, there is an anointing. I just saw a, a very mighty manifestation of the power of God here. Now, listen. Whether you know it or not, if there is anything influencing your, your destiny that is not of the Christ, it's about to give way right now. Hallelujah. At the count of three, hear me. Whether you are inside, outside, or following online, I want you to shout that name Jesus with understanding. It's not just a chant. My Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, not a weak tower. The righteous run it to it and they are saved. I want to pray for you. I know you've shouted in other months, but great deliverance, great deliverance is about to come your way. Father, I pray that every spirit in this place that does not name the name of the Christ, that is sitting on the destinies, of men and women manipulating their results I stand and call upon the God of Jeshurun the one that rides upon the wings and I declare let there be deliverance at the count of three shout that name Jesus one two three be free now be free now be free now please bring them out be free now. Overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three. All the extension online. I declare be free now from ancestry. Be free from foundation. Be free from witchcraft. Bring them out. Paru Salikata. Embrekete Barata. Operations of darkness. I'm seeing a womb like the drawing of a woman's womb and I'm seeing it close. It doesn't just mean physical barrenness. It means a spirit that is closing the door of results. Many people cannot get results but right now that door is about to open and I stand by the God of heaven by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Everyone's destiny that has been closed so that it will not find manifestation. At the count of three, let it be open. One, two, three. Be open now. 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 Be open now.
Mighty God. A few minutes, we are going to pray for the sick now. Now, please listen. I'm only going to do this for this overflow and overflow one. That's not to mean I'm neglecting the remaining. It's just a revelation that God is giving me. There are two angels standing by my left and my right. And every time I see this, God wants me to move. Listen, hear me. Except God is not God. When I pass any road where you are, anything that does not name the name of the Christ, and any dimension that is not of God in your life, it must give way. Now, I only do this for this and overflow one. Afterwards, we are going to pray for the sick. Please, I want you to just believe. I don't know why God does these things but I want you to believe that he is mighty and that he will glorify himself father in the name of Jesus Christ glorify yourself change everything that needs to be changed many of you will be receiving impartations that will shift you to dimensions I want you to believe it I will pray not everywhere but there are a few people 
I'm seeing this happen by the Spirit. Hali Shalatos Pragados Krekete Barakushla. I shift you in the spirit. Every limitation that does not name the name of Christ. I'm praying mantles, anointings by the spirit coming on people right now. Let that presence of God shift you to dimension in the name of Jesus. Dimension. I'm seeing a chain around here. I break that chain now. I'm seeing a chain around here. Let that chain be broken now. Let that chain be broken now. Let that chain be broken now. Break now. Break now. Break now. Chains be broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, God is turning your life around. Where are you coming from? Kaduna State. In the name of Jesus. Break now. In the name of Jesus. Be free now. From everything that is not of God. Be free now. Something is breaking here. Something is breaking here. Something is breaking here. Parusha Likatos. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now by the Spirit of the Living God. I break it now. Mama, I break it now. I break it now. Sensing an evil spirit just around here. I come against you now. I take authority over that influence. You must go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Overflow one, lift your voice and pray in the spirit. Harusa Sigadesh. Now listen. Be your brother's keeper. You don't have to touch me. Please, be your brother's keeper so you don't enjoy yourself. But as I pass here, anything that is not of God is about to give way right now. Thank you, Jesus. Go now. Let it go now. Let it go now. Let it go now. All that I come against you now. In Release them now. Release them now. Release them now. Release them now. I'm seeing what looks like an altar right here. Release them now in the name of Jesus. Harusa Sikete. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. The spirit of delay right here is breaking. Breaking over someone's family. Be broken now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be broken now. In the name of Jesus. Now watch this. Listen. Hold on please. Hold on please. I'm standing here and I'm seeing who is Rebecca. Rebecca. They call you Becky. Rebecca. Just not inside. Here you are. What's your name? Rebecca. Don't worry. It's okay. What's your name? Don't just come out if in the name of Jesus Christ, come. I end oppression now over your life and your family. Oh, you, my dear, your name is Rebecca. Where are you from? You are from, are you from Makodi? Benway State. In the name of Jesus. I keep seeing this spirit every time I pray for people. That thing they call Aleku, A-L something K-U. In the name of Jesus, I cast that spirit by the God of heaven. If there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is a victim of that spirit, you are from that region, I stand by the God of heaven. Let it come to an end now. Help them, please. Let it come to an end now. In the name of Jesus. Hold on, please. Right here, 
there is a gentle man who will be mightily used by God. I just saw a strong mantle from my head resting on someone. I stretched my hands. Lord, I don't know where they are. Parus kabadu sheleketa. Let that grace come on you now. Strange mantle, prayer fire, word fire, illumination in the spirit. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. I'm standing here and I'm seeing a family with a yoke of marital delay. I'm seeing something that looks like an arrow just coming from heaven. Right now, let deliverance come now. Let it come now. I'm still moving. The hand of God is coming to people right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please, you don't have to touch me. In the name of Jesus, right here, financial stagnation comes to an end. An anointing is coming on someone for your family. Financial stagnation. Let it be over now. My dear, be free now. Out! Now! Someone here, the power of God is coming on that person. Be free now! Free from everything that is not of God. New dimension, new dimensions. I'm seeing an anointing here. New dimension. The old story must leave you. That's what God is saying. I'm prophesying to someone here. The old story must leave you. The old is gone so that the new will come. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is the woman? Wait, hold on, please. I held someone's hand now, holding a photo of a sick patient. Where is she? Come. Who is this? Where is he? He's in China. What's wrong with him? He's depressed now. If I don't pray for him, I'm seeing him inside a coffin. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, let there be deliverance for him now. What's his name? Ibrahim. This is not only something affecting him. This is something that is influencing the entire family. But I stand by the God of heaven and I set you free. In the name of Jesus, be completely free. And I speak to him, Ibrahim, may the power of God touch you and perfect you now and perfect you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for the sick. My friend, this man looking at me, come. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are from Kogi State. What do you do? Are you a man of God? You came here trusting God for fresh fire. Come. You are about to receive it because I'm seeing you from Kogi State. You, where is your church? Look at me, sir. Where You have a church? You are under a church. Mm. A time will come God will give you your own work. Now God is preparing you. Be faithful. You will go, but now is not the time. You leave now, you will suffer for nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let sincere people come and push you out of the will of God. But surely a time is coming and you will walk in very strange dimensions of the anointing. Father, I lay my hands upon this man. Let his dealings with the spirit progress. In the name of Jesus. Not only an impartation, a dealing that produces real power in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. This lady with green, this lady, you, come. The Lord is about to turn your life around in a way that will surprise you. Two things will happen to you. Number one, I'm seeing restoration. God is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration. Number two, I'm seeing the gift of men. Please do listen to my message. Help them on the gift of men. God is bringing people strangely to lift you. I lay my hands upon you and I pray, may this grace be effectual. Carry that grace right now. And you will start having visions. Visions. God is going to start giving you dreams and he will start giving you visions. In the name of Jesus. This is very strange what I'm seeing. 
except that I saw it, I will not say it. Stop running away from the call. You are a man of God's wife. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying what does not make sense. Stop running from the call. You are the wife of a man of God, a minister of the gospel. The Lord will bring performance to his word. This thing I tell you is a strange mystery, the way God works. But in the name of Jesus, I place the word of God upon that prophecy. It's time for you to not fight the will of God. It's time for you to relinquish your own will in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray just one prayer point. The Lord is asking me, immediately we do that, we'll pray for the sick and we'll start submitting our request. Where is that young lady that came out with one mama while I was praying for her? There's a young lady that was wearing glasses. I don't, if, if you are here, you are the one. What do you do? You are going to be very wealthy. Come. Are you a lawyer? Huh? This is your mother? Where are you coming from, madam? Okay, you are the reverse woman. This lady you see is going to be extremely wealthy. Because I'm seeing you a lawyer. And you are going to, you, I don't know what area of law you are going to specialize, but I'm seeing you sitting with so many business people. This is a lot of business people. Signing contracts, helping people to process a lot of things. Millions, huh? That's what? That's where she is right now. Doing some things abroad. She's what? That's what she's doing right now, where she works. That's what she's doing now. Right now, where she works. Because I'm seeing God will just cause them to like her. It's not every man that is a foolish and a stupid man. There are people who are out to genuinely bless. Yes, sir. And I pray for your daughter and I connect her by the Spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. she will find these people. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, she will shift her to another dimension. Amen. Mama, God is saying I should tell you, forgive. Does it make sense to you? It's my husband also. He's a lawyer. But... Your husband is a lawyer? Yes, but... What was the issue? Nothing is happening. Don't worry, ma. Do you know why you fell under the anointing? You fell on behalf of all the troubles in your... It wasn't just your personal falling alone. There are times that you fall representing all of these troubles. Because this is not what I'm even saying. God is saying I should tell you to forgive. Forgiveness. Now, it doesn't make sense. And God has not given me an interpretation. But let me tell you this. You see, look up. The average person seated here has been hurt by someone. Whether friends, are we together? Uncles, relatives, people you trusted and they betrayed you. Let me tell you something about unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a terrible spirit. It's one of the master secrets to delay. Unforgiveness. It will keep you in one place forever. You are there angry and annoyed and most of what you'll be angry about is legitimate however you see forgiveness is a type of giving understand this forgiveness is still the, the giving grace that helps men to forgive the only thing with forgiveness is that you give in advance are we together the highest form of forgiveness is tolerance where you know it will happen again and you build a system around it to not hurt you. We live in a society that is so hot conscious. This one hurt me. This one did this. There are too many things that can create offense. The Bible says in nothing should you be offended. It's a choice. Mama, in the name of Jesus, please don't cry. I don't know what it is and why you are crying. But my dear, comfort your mother after the prayer. Eh? In the name of Jesus, what is before you? is greater than anything that has caused you pain and in the name of jesus forgive in the name of jesus forgive i also pray for someone here do you know there are many couples that have not been able to forgive one another in marriages it can last for 10 years 20 years same room same bed but that bitterness especially for the men we don't know that this might be the secret the bible says for dishonoring your wife the consequence is that your heavens will be closed it's not a lie that's why you see men struggle and struggle and 
simple things become hard because of the propensity for bitterness make up your mind in this miracle service that you will let go and not only forgive but tolerate i wish i can tell you there are some things your loved ones are doing that they will never do again but they will do it every time a door is about to open here offense comes it's a choice i will not be offended are we together father we pray for our daddy in the name of jesus the kind of miracle that god will do in the life of this man let it be so powerful that everybody around will know that this is the doing of the lord i decree it and i establish it in the name of jesus christ there is a gentleman here we are going to pray goodness you see how time just runs there is a gentleman here you are a member of mountain of fire where are you mountain of fire you are a serious brother mountain of fire now please I'm, I'm not just saying you attend don't listen to instructions please right mfm my friend you are serious you come from where mfm kano mfm kano how about yes, you Calabar. mfm calabar how about you lagos lagos i want to pray i'm not saying if you are from mfm just come out like that there are particular people it doesn't matter what denomination you are from once you are here huh this is a universal this is a master key it will complement on what every grace and every man and woman of god is doing but i want to pray for you my friend i i'm going i'm first going to pray for you where are you from i'm from a quiet bomb state there is serious witchcraft sitting on your destiny yes, i hope sir. you are not embarrassed yes sir yes sir huh? you need help you have prayed stand up please you are a prayer warrior you can pray you can do fasting huh? sometimes you just need a grace to help you you hear what i tell you i'm going to pray for you if i don't pray for you i'm seeing the spirit of death start sweeping people in your family like that like play like play until it starts killing people but let me tell you don't despise yourself you need a lot of mentorship but you are going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of god this brother you see is very serious with god huh very serious with god you just need the right support impartations and a mentorship system that makes for balance in your life hold my hand father what's your name huh anthony tony in the name of jesus everything that represents witchcraft i join my faith with that of your father and your leader dr daniel Odikoya, and i decree in the name of jesus be free now i decree by the power of the holy spirit the spirit of death far from your dwelling in the name of jesus christ i want to pray for you who is looking for a job uh -uh. I'm not saying I'm not unemployment. I'm talking to these guys. That I, of course, I know that people are trusting God for jobs. Where did you apply? Huh? Kaduna State Civil Service. The Lord says I should pray for you that they will give you. Do I know you applied for a job? Stand up. Uh, prophecy is powerful. In a moment, God can just change things like that. My dear, let me tell you this. It's not even the issue of Kaduna State Civil Service alone. Huh? God is going to give you unusual influence. It will marvel you. Are we together now? Hold my hands. You believe what I'm telling you? Yes. Father, confirm your word in a way that will surprise this lady. Let that rejected stone in the name of jesus become the chief cornerstone receive of that grace in the name of jesus i speak it so i make it so i establish it by the power of prophecy let me pray for you gentlemen i don't know if it's you or someone related to you but there's someone god is giving a job someone looking for a job but i want to pray for you father you called out the gentlemen from mfm kano and the remaining places i decree and declare by the god of heaven that everything that represents witchcraft in your life let it give way now in the name of jesus let it give way now even by the power of the holy spirit 
the Lord is showing me a lady I'm not going to ask you to come God bless you but I'm lifting up my hand I'm seeing you know how you cover a bride when you are about to marry before they remove that thing from her face this is what I'm seeing but that one is not pride of wedding this is evil covering your entire a human being with almost no head huh? and the Lord is saying I should pray that that veil be torn I don't know who that person is but right now the power of God is going there there, there are many of you I perceive in the name of Jesus that veil that has covered you so that no good thing finds you by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I declare that veil torn into pieces now Turn into pieces now inside outside online turn into pieces now the last case I attend to and then we'll begin to pray for the sick nothing ever lasts in your hand this is the problem you are trusting God for in fact is one of your requests nothing many good things continue to happen but they never last if a, if a season of open door comes three four months sometimes men can come into your life or women can come into your life and after two three months for reasons you cannot explain you have never sustained any blessing for up to two years as it comes you will see it sometimes you will go to bed in the night and you will have a dream you may see someone come maybe to molest you or to attempt to have an affair with you this is what i'm seeing the moment that thing happens it will not be up to one month and every good thing goes down but i'm praying right now in the name of jesus whoever belongs to this category every attachment you have with spirits that are not of the christ that warrant visitations in the night to molest and oppress you and spy into your liberty i declare by the spirit of god be free now. Sheparuta Seketegete. Be free now. Help them, please. Be free now. Be free now. My dear, come. You come. Hold my hands. It's your it's a new season for you by the anointing of the Holy Ghost step into a new season i've touched you i saw you climbing a ladder in the spirit i release you into that dimension in the name of jesus christ we have to hurry up and pray for the sick now now please watch this this lady jumping shame and reproach i call it by his name and i command it to leave you now First Timothy chapter 1 please and verse 18 believers continue to struggle with the tragedy of unfulfilled please listen please listen unfulfilled prophecies praise the Lord The Lord is speaking to someone in overflow one. It will not happen as you have seen. I don't know what I'm saying, but the Lord is just asking me to speak it just like that. It will not happen as you have seen. I believe that tonight's um, message may be why the anointing is moving in this dimension. It will not happen as you have seen. It will not happen as you have seen. It will not happen as you have seen in the name of Jesus Christ praise the Lord so many believers continue to battle with unfulfilled prophecies here and there men and women of God all over the world continue to speak the counsel of God the Word of God to individuals but then we notice that people receive these prophecies and most now let me tell you sincerely most of the prophecies we receive never come to pass and tonight is an attempt to very quickly show us what may be wrong and then also to reveal to us 
the place of the prophetic listen very carefully and the place of the word of god because there are people for instance who have seen things in visions in dreams or have received prophetic words from anointed people genuine people filled with the holy spirit and these prophecies may not have been consistent with the dealings of god some of them may have been negative prophecies and they have remained helpless believing that just because a man anointed by god accredited by god made a pronouncement and utterance to them it meant that nothing could be done about it and then they sit down and allow those prophecies happen so we're dealing with the prophetic today and i pray that god will grant us understanding so let's go very quickly our time is gone read with me verse 18 everyone one to read this charge i commit unto thee son timothy uh-huh according to the prophecies which went before on thee that thou war a good warfare stop there paul is speaking to his son in the gospel timothy and he's saying that some prophecies were released to go ahead of you now understand what he's saying he's encouraging him he's saying mr man be assured of this that we have released prophetic words to go ahead of you but he tells him that by them those prophecies that have gone ahead of you you will war a good warfare hallelujah so it is possible that prophetic words can be sent ahead of a person please listen very carefully whether in ministry in family life business career whatever it is that the prophetic is real now let me balance this up front even before we continue our discussion there are people here and there who probably because of their religious affiliations their denominations or the kind and the structure of mentorship they may have received may have been trained by well-meaning sincere men and women of god to ignore or despise the prophetic to despise prophecy we find people some persons have been very vocal about the fact that the prophetic is not useful in today's church and all versions of sarcasm has been communicated as regards the prophetic the bible says very clearly and i think that i will just um solve that once and for all in first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20 let the word of god speak once and for all first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20 if you're a christian please read with me one to read despise not prophesying one more time this is a warning do not despise prophesying do not despise the place of the prophetic in your journey to knowing god and living a meaningful life that means that the bible recognizes that there is a place for the prophetic okay so we establish that up front that there is a place for the prophetic and the bible says to not despise it that means that if you find yourself in an environment where yourself or the leaders around you continue to despise prophesying you don't have to fight anybody you don't have to create trouble but let it be a settled conviction within you that in the journey of a believer there is a place listen carefully there is a place for the prophetic there is a place for prophesying are we together When it comes to the prophetic, the Bible lets us know that even scripture is prophecy. Do you agree with me? Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19, please. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. It says we have also 
a more sure word of prophecy when you read in context coming down you will know that he was speaking about scripture as a more sure word of prophecy he says where unto ye do well that ye take heed now listen very carefully so he's telling you that there are prophesyings that have to do with the speakings of men under the influence of the holy spirit are we together he's telling you that there is another kind of prophesying that is the revelation as captured in scripture it says to also take heed as well so do not despise the prophesyings that has to do with the speakings of men and that you do not despise the prophesying that has to do with the authority of scripture the prophecy of scripture we call it are we together now yes The character of these two dimensions of prophetic operations are not the same. Please listen very, very carefully. So the Bible is prophetic. The words that are written in scripture are prophetic. The words that are spoken by a man under the influence of the spirit of God to you, real time, is also prophetic. But in terms of superiority, please listen. They are not all the same, although engineered by the Spirit of God. The Bible lets us know, please look at me, that the prophecy of Scripture and the prophecy that comes from a vessel, they are all together to the edifying of the saints, but they do not hold the same weight in the Spirit. You have to learn this. The word more sure means more reliable more dependable are we together it attempts to show you the excellency of the prophecy of scripture that means that if given an option for both of them the bible gives you its recommendation in terms of reliability and certainty it tells you to depend on the prophecy that comes from scripture are we together there are many reasons for this and that's that's not that's not where i'm going tonight my goal is to show you why prophecies fail and then to connect a few things and we'll pray the bible in many expressions tells us that scripture has been tried seven times the word seven there means complete that the truths of scripture have been vetted again and again and has been found reliable listen the bible is not the only book that contains pieces of the wisdom of God. Listen carefully. Here and there, God has dealt with people. Here and there, different religions have tapped into the wisdom of God through the understanding of his principles. And they have captured details that are consistent with God's operation. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Chances are that you can pick a book that is non-Christian. You can pick any religious book on earth and read it and you will find communications that are consistent with the way God would have spoken and how God would have acted. And the results even in those books show you that the agency that supplied that result was not of the devil. It's not an endorsement to the books. The advantage of the Bible is that as a singular compendium, it contains the wisest perspective in all matters. Are we together now? Listen very carefully now. It contains the wisest perspective. Why? Because they are God's opinion. Among all of the books that have been arrayed for the edification of man, the Bible, as a compendium of 66 books, has been recommended by the Spirit of God that it can guide men to know God. It can guide men to become victorious. When you study theology, you will find out that there are many other books. They are generally called extra-biblical texts. There is what we call the annals of the king. 
There's what we call the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's what we call the books of Jasha. All of these books are extra biblical materials that were written. Are we together now? But then in the wisdom of God and through his predetermined counsel, he has found out that the fruits contained in this compendium we call the Bible is sufficient to be the limit of the jurisdiction of your knowing God. You will find many books that contain certain information that may not be captured here. And God is telling you within the context of your civilization, any knowledge about me that is not in this volume is not required for life and godliness in as much as you're working with me is concerned. So the Bible becomes the coordinates, if you allow me to use that word. The Bible becomes the defining jurisdiction for your knowing God. Listen very carefully. I'm showing you the reasons why the word of God is called a more sure word of prophecy. God has vetted the truths here and found out that any believer that settles with scripture as contained in this book, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there is no dimension of God required for your knowledge that the truths here in partnership with the Holy Spirit cannot bring you into. So it's called the more sure word. It has predicted your life already. More than any man can predict. More than any man can prophesy. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? The vessel that speaks to you is limited by many factors. Number one, the accuracy of his or her perception. Number two, the accuracy of his or her interpretation. Number three, the atmosphere that became the influence upon which he spoke. Are we together? Number four, the level of renewal of that vessel as at the time he spoke. All of these are factors all together that can interrupt the purity and the quality of the speakings. It doesn't mean the person is fake. These are the things that water down the efficacy of the prophetic. Are we together? And then the mental development of that prophet or that speaker also matters. Chances are that if naturally speaking, I'm a person that detests excellence. If God is giving me a prophetic word that relates to excellence, my, my prior fortitude for trivializing excellence will make that prophetic word not come with the gravity with which it left heaven. Because in my person, I don't find excellence to be something that is needed. If I'm someone, for instance, who does not believe finance and prosperity is useful, are we together? If a prophetic word comes that God is going to make Sam a millionaire, remember I've trained myself to be embarrassed to even talk of millionaire because I've interpreted it as carnality. Chances are that I would just say you are going to be blessed. You see that now. So the efficacy of that prophetic word was corrupted by the limitation of my spiritual understanding. But then let's assume, for instance, that I was accurate enough to deliver it, to be fair enough, and you now receive it. Now, remember, I'm not fake. Remember, I'm anointed. Remember, you too, you are not fake. You see that now? Yes. The giver and the believer have to be real for it to work. So, we agree that two of us are not fake. Are we together? And now you receive that word. And then... It never comes to pass. And you go back to God and say, Lord, what happened? I got a prophetic word by a man of God. And according to the word, he said, by June, I will have a car. Remember, he called my name. It was accurate. He called the name of my wife. It was accurate. Every other detail was accurate. So it supported my believing him. Yet it did not happen. I even fell down. You can add it. And it didn't happen. He prophesied to me that as I return back, my ministry will expand. He described in detail my ministry. Called the name. 
called everything. I went back and after five years were worse than even before I came for that consultation. What is the reason? Why do prophecies fail? This is a question that even men of God, apostles and prophets themselves, have not seemed to find an answer to. So usually, as men, the obvious answer is to transfer blames. So I come to you and I say, it has to be your fault. You didn't have faith. You didn't believe me. My track record is there to show. And then the other person says, well, I may have my track record, but I don't know what happened to you as at the time you are speaking to me. I know that it was not God. And then we read scriptures like God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Are we together now? When you read these scriptures, it further confuses you. Because you are now looking and saying, that means that it is within God's power to bring his word to pass. The reason why many people are confused over spiritual things is because we don't read our Bibles. We listen to people. But we don't study scripture. We do morning devotions. We listen to messages online. Profitable and wonderful. But we don't stay with scripture. For the purpose of building understanding. Building conviction. So most of our convictions are outsourced and borrowed. Our convictions are hardly intrinsic. Something that came as a result of a revelation given by God. Most of our convictions are outsourced. We borrow the confidence of someone we respect. Just because the person said, this is it. We say, this is it too. Why do prophecies fail? Hallelujah. Are we blessed? So many people have relaxed and crossed their legs. So many people have even written the prophetic words that were spoken unto them. Barren women have received prophecies. You will have a child. And it's five years gone. No child. Sick people in the hospital receive prophetic words. Do you have a loved one in the hospital? Yes, sir. Is he sick? Yes, sir. About to die? Yes, sir. Thus saith the Lord, he shall not die. Isaiah 38. Mighty God, we give you praise. Give us understanding and be glorified. Isaiah chapter 38. Mm. In those days, look up please, was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah the what? The son of Amos came unto him and said, help me read. Thus saith the Lord. Stop there. So we agreed that it was not the speakings of Isaiah. Thus saith who? The Lord. Set thy house in order. Why? For thou shalt die and not live. Don't call anybody fake again because the prophecy is negative. Who spoke negative here? Thus saith who now? Talk to me. I mean, we're Christians. Don't just begin to. The man was a vessel. I brought you Jumia package. You opened it and saw a gun and you arrest. No, you, you don't. I, I was sent. I'm a messenger. Thus saith the Lord, set your house in order. He says, for thou shalt die. Who are you going to beg? Who will you beg to help you beg God? That God sends a prophet and he speaks. Put your house in order. You are going to die. Verse 2. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto who? <laughs> he turned and prayed unto the Lord verse 3 and said remember now O Lord I beseech thee 
how I have walked before thee in sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. And with a perfect heart, and I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept so. Verse 4. Then, then, hold on. The first time he said, Thus saith the Lord. Now he's saying, The word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Verse 5 Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Listen. What was wrong, O oh God, with your understanding? Couldn't you see the end from the beginning again? You sent a prophet with your reputation on him. And within minutes, prophecies changed. This is a discussion between God and a man. A man goes to God and says, God, what did I hear that you said? You said I'm going to die. Let me do something to you that will make you change your own word. Please listen. I have added now 15 days to your, to your years. Verse 6. And I will deliver thee and this city from the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. Next verse. We are reading to verse 8. And this shall be a sign from the Lord that what you now hear is more superior than what you had before. Because the both for and against me came from God. So why, which one should I believe? Remember, thus saith the Lord before came from God. Thus saith the Lord now also came from God. You have kept me in limbo. And God is saying, I will give you a sign. To show you which is superior. Please go back. Verse 7. Verse 7. That the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. Which one? Which one didn't he speak? <laughs> Verse 8. Behold... I will bring again the shadow of the degrees which is gone down in the sun this and that and that backwards so the sun returned 10 degrees by which degrees it was gone down he gave him a sign so by the time the guy saw the sun going down he said ah this sign was tied to the second prophecy and based on it I know now and I have confidence that something I have done has made God to override the first prophecy. There is now, let me tell you some interesting things here. Number one, God never admitted he made a mistake. So it was not a mistake. God is, ah, sorry, is it you? Uh, 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 Isaiah, you know how busy I am. I have to speak to this and that. No. God acted as if he didn't talk before. L listen to this. He would have said, okay, go back and say, it's okay, it's okay. No, you don't need to cry. I'm God. Am I still not your father? He just changed as if he's not the one. Imagine if you were that prophet. It's as if God just denied you now and left you in trouble. Imagine if Isaiah came to your church. If um, who? Hezekiah came to your church. Miracle service. And you now prophesied. And said, this is what I see. Oh. The same way it moved from positive to negative. I can also stand in the name of the Lord and prophesy to you that by next week, five of you will be in America. And by next week, one person is in jail. The other person is in the hospital. And you will come back and say, Mr. Man, come and arrest this man because he is fake. Between the first prophecy and the second prophecy, man did something. Listen to me very carefully. Between the first speaking of God and what he changed, man did something. That means between a positive prophecy 
and a negative one that happens there is man in between that does something that can turn prophecy please listen to me and learn this all personal prophecies write it down please all personal prophecies spoken by any servant of god all all personal prophecies spoken by any servant of god have conditions that must be adhered to for their actualization all prophecies there is no prophecy spoken by any man of god on earth that happens on his own are we together listen the prophecy of scripture is a revelation of the preset principles of God that has already been attached to his speakings. Notice, notice how the construction of scripture is. For every speaking of God, there is a condition. Are you seeing that now? The moment you satisfy that condition, there are some of them you don't even have to pray. The moment you satisfy that condition, it happens. Are we together now? Look at this. I don't need to speak to your ground, your farm, and say in the name of Jesus, except I'm not a man of God. Corn, you must come out this year. No. Already a word had been sent while the earth remains. Seed time and harvest. That means if I never sow, I would not know whether that word is still valid or not. So my sowing gives the word an opportunity to prove itself and then it grows that the word of god is more sure because already for everything god says the principle to actualize it has been added as a man of god i can receive prophecy for you and not be able to be aligned enough to receive the principle that makes that prophecy come to pass i can tell you god is going to lift you but the limitation of my prophetic reception does not allow me to tell you what you must do to make that prophecy come to pass. So I just tell you, this is what I see. You are great. The word of God says, this is what you must do. You are great too. Choose which of the two. That if you never meet a physical man who speaks to you, you can go to Jesus the prophet. I am the way, the truth, and life. Jesus the prophet and look at a scripture and lift that scripture as Jesus speaking to you and say Jesus I hear you I've heard you say to me that it shall come to pass if I diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and do all that you command me this day that you will set me on high above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon me and overtake me there is no witch in hell hear me if you prophesy to me and say apostle i see failure you are not wrong but i have i know that there is a more sure word of prophecy for as long as i walk in keeping with what jesus the prophet said there is no divination and there is no enchantment from the pit of hell that can override the authority in the cadre of authority the prophecy of scripture stands superior to any human prophecy men of god and women of god are gradually pushing prophecy outside of the jurisdiction of its relevance and members are today becoming slaves to men and women of god a man seems to be able to own the souls of people because you can just speak to anybody anyhow and they go back saying this one has spoken apostle joshua selman has spoken no prophecies can fail to the negative 
or to the positive. I can speak to you and say God will bless you. You will eat well. Don't obey the principles of scripture that make for increase and you will be surprised. When men say there is a casting down, you will join them and say there is a casting down. Why? Because you violated the principle. There is no truth of scripture. Salvation is the freest thing we know. And the condition is that if thou shalt believe with thy heart, talk to me koinonia, and thou shalt confess with your mouth, that means you can stand around a preacher and he can preach a powerful sermon and you will still go to hell. You had the word, but you still went to hell. This action part, this condition part, is why many prophecies fail. The prophet spoke in scripture that a virgin shall be with child. He didn't say a virgin called Mary. He said a virgin. There were many women who qualified for that prophecy. But one woman aligned herself enough. So the angel came to say, Madam, we have found you favored. And I've taught you that favor does not happen automatically. Mary was understudied from heaven. There were many other ladies. But heaven looked at Mary. Does she sustain? Please help them. Does she sustain the character? Will Mary be able to stand the embarrassment of getting pregnant from a ghost? The way Mary is, if pressure is too much, are you sure she's not going to corner Joseph and run away? Is this woman, is she liable to receiving a bribe from a rabbi? Mary was not just favored, she was studied. Her alignment was making her partner with prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then the angel came back and said, Mary, we have found you favored. And the favor is that based on our examination, you are the most fit person among the virgins here to carry Jesus. She said, well, um, I don't want to abort prophecy. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. And then the angel explained that, okay, this is what will happen. You will not need to meet a man. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. Your stomach will just start bulging out. Don't find it strange. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't worry. It's okay. And she said, be it unto me. Be the word unto me. I receive the word. Be it unto me according to your word. Mary would have sat down and said, no, this deal is not fair. The ghost has to come with you and explain to me. And let me understand if I see him and I think he's really a spirit and that. Do you know it would have delayed the birth of Jesus. Heaven would have had to now go back and start looking for another person again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. So God has spoken great things over our lives. Many of us received the word. We didn't receive the conditions. We left the conditions on the ground. When we fell down, we got up, we received the word. But we left the conditions. As a result, our lives are a shadow of what God said should be. Because we received the word, but did not receive the conditions. The angel comes and tells Joshua that this city will be defeated. But then he gives him the conditions immediately. And demands that the conditions be adhered to in total. So he began to go around Jericho once every day. The seventh day he went seven times and they shouted and prophecy came to pass. There is no prophecy that happens on its own. There are few prophecies in the Bible that are called written judgments. There are verdicts already that have been declared. One of it is the eternal doom of Lucifer. There is no prayer retreat that will happen to beg God to change his mind about the condition of Satan. So if you have a dream and you see Satan 
coming back in heaven to join the seraphs you know straight up that you are under attack because based on the truth of scripture written it's a written judgment are we together another written judgment the eternal doom of those who reject christ the antichrist and his cohorts these things are written the only thing you can do is to exempt yourself from it but you cannot stop it number three the reality of causes and yokes on earth is written ordinances were intentionally put the only thing you can you can't stop causes on the earth no they are there the only thing you can do is exempt yourself from it you can say minus me and my family but to say minus it out of the earth no sir it is not given to you you can cast out demons from your life from a church from your vicinity but not from the earth there is nobody who will stand and gather all the demons on earth because he said i behold i give you power remember scripture power so i have that authority i've been risen with christ above all thrones dominions and every name that is named you gather all the demons in one place catch them and let there be peace on earth no that does not happen i, I don't know if you understand what i'm saying yes the number one reason why prophecies do not come to pass is because people receive the word but do not receive the condition the condition for actualizing the prophecies the other side of this is that you can change any prophecy write it down please don't let anybody tell you there are prophetic words that will not change and cannot change that is against the character of scripture the bible shows us again and again that it is within the power of a believer to change prophecies that means if your father looks at you and says you are cursed you are a foolish and stupid son i know a woman years ago when i was in secondary school there was a woman who was tired of her son stealing she will make her little money and this naughty boy will come and carry continue to fish the money out of the, the mother's wallet and one day she was angry and she looked at him and cursed him she said he will stop stealing only when rats stop stealing let me tell you this guy as soon as he's going out of the cell he won't reach two weeks he's back again they know him. they just open the door there's nothing to ask what happened mm -mm. just walk in we know do you think that boy does not have a way out imagine that that boy is in a place where he never meets a man who can speak to him is there hope for that boy yes sir there is jesus the prophet that he can look at it that even the lawful captives is it in your bible a more sure word of prophecy even the lawful captives can be delivered so you can find this truth and believe it but you just get up and say, wow, I found it. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I'm delivered. Hallelujah. You are not delivered. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You are only informed about deliverance that is possible. Are you seeing how we mock ourselves? We just find it out. Oh, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm done. And right after then, you will see what they say should happen. Happen. There are conditions. What made the captive lawfully captive? And what is the condition for that person to be delivered? The biggest hit of this prophetic inaccuracy is in the area of financial prosperity. Many poor people in the church today, the years they have spent waiting for prophecy is the same time they would have activated the blessings of God upon their lives. They have sat down lazily and carelessly and some foolishly waiting for a prophetic word by an accurate man. And members continue to harass men of God around and say, you have spoken, it's not working. I bless you. I bless you. You are correct. But you go and read and study everything the Bible says about the blessing. How it works and how it is activated and you'll find out that many people are hoping in futility it's true charismatics this is where charismatics have failed 
the excitement that comes with revelation has swallowed up the need for compliance people just jump here and there things will happen he shall keep the imperfect peace yes and no evil shall come nigh thy dwelling you go and look for trouble and see what happens it will look as if angels are no longer there so what have you, I, I, I get what i'm saying now yes you can choose to end your life now today right now you go and stand you go and stand on the road let me be prophesying in jesus name you will live long i stand under the oil god has given me while you stroll foolishly you use your will that is more powerful that's the same will that brought jesus into your heart jesus stood at the gate of your heart and would not enter until that will let him in and you stand in front of a door and a truck the spirit of death is an opportunist he looks for a scenario that makes his ministry possible so he's scouting around zaria and here he finds someone about to stand near a t-junction carelessly he will heighten the drunkenness of the driver and with speed he will not see you he will come and clear you you are dead now resurrection is a different law altogether we can now start but as far as that seed is concerned you are dead hallelujah let me tell you something that happened to a young man i'm sure he may be listening or maybe he's here it's a big mistake that the boy made he had some carryovers and um he saw me in a dream <laughs> according to him i appeared in a dream and i told him i said everything is all right now watch this now everything is all right very consistent with what god will say are we together the same way god looks at the poor and say let the poor say i am rich they said i'm rich till they became old nothing happened and then the gentleman got up and didn't even do anything he refused to take the carryovers refused to do anything and he just sat down and he called me and was sending text messages and was telling me look i'm not trying to jeer the gentleman no not at all i'm just trying to use it to correct now you see that word was at the mercy of a condition are we together now is it not when your lecturer sees your script now you have done your own part to at least write the spirit of god can now move upon that man to show you mercy mercy is not possible now because the condition to activate the mercy was not granted the same way the bible says that you will build houses and you keep looking at your land that house will not be built someone will look at you and say speak to me say I, I, the same thing i told you last year is what god is showing me again the day you take a step of faith and you buy sharp sand one tipper and pour there by faith what happens that's your five loaf and two fish you are ready for a miracle a destiny helper can now come and say what's going on here See, I'm, I'm starting life i'm pushing this thing by faith say really come to my office tomorrow now your obedience has allowed prophecy to find expression are we together yes your marriage shall be a blessing your children surround your table you will see your children's children you are a bad gentleman and you are a bad lady god will never that prophecy will never come to pass are you getting what i'm saying now there are many guys that just cross their legs i saw myself i saw my children i saw a jeep here i saw a resort center here you are dreaming let me tell you this prophecy will never come to pass because god demands diligence and productivity for wealth to happen you have ignored that law and so that prophecy will never come to pass are we together your marriage will be a blessing if you know what it takes for a husband and a wife to live together if the only thing you take to your marriage is prophecy you are in trouble you must take understanding you must take what understanding so that when your wife shouts and say i hate you i hate you i hate the day i married you you just know that she doesn't mean what she's saying if you carry that that straight line prophetic thinking and slap her that's the end of that marriage in spite of the fact that the bible says you will see your children's children 
prophecies can fail. When men do not satisfy the conditions that make for the actualization of that prophecy, it will fail. The same way negative prophecies can be averted. I've told you, I've shared this with you once and again that people continue, you know, here and there, people can have dreams about me over trips that I'm taking, whether by road or by air, and they can send a text and say, Apostle, I got up, I saw a very dangerous dream. Very dangerous dream and this is it and i saw a ghastly motor accident or i saw a plane crash and you are there now they are not fake truly it may be that that's the plot of the enemy it would be stupid for me to think satan is going on break for me no there are many people who think the devil is attacking them the devil is not attacking them do you know what it takes for satan to attack you you to be honest if you were satan will you attack everybody it's not strategic What have you done that justifies being attacked? The level of investment you think Satan is making on you is, is, is flattery. Most of what we are getting is the inertia of prophecy. Just sitting on your life and not moving. Because you have refused to do something about it. Take Satan out of the earth. People's condition will only improve a little. Only do what? improve a little you'll be surprised you think if satan is taken out of the earth suddenly the poor will be rich suddenly you in fact let me tell you there are many people who that god uses the way the devil pushes them to help them understand god you will be surprised to see that some people's situation will be worse when satan is out because there's no basis for pain again to bring conviction Some of you right now are sitting down waiting for prophecies to happen by themselves. Some of our parents received prophecies since 1980, 1970 till today. That prophecy has not come to pass. And we continue to carry disappointment in our hearts. I am showing you right now, listen very carefully, that more than the speakings of any man, you must find a place there are many men of God who people will look and say, I see a grace on you. Say, yes, I, I, somebody has told me before, confirmation. I see that you will be a powerful man of God. Yes, sir. I'm seeing like Reinhard Bonke. I see Reinhard Bonke. The other one said that you will never be like Reinhard. Do you know what Reinhard Bonke did to be Reinhard Bonke? Talk about the times of prayer. Talk about the times of fasting. Listen to me. Talk about the times of engaging the word. Talk about the disciplines that it takes to host God's power. You ignore that there is no Reinhard Bonke for you. The worst, in fact, let me even take it a step further before we pray. The worst one is that hands were laid on you when prophecies came. And you just believe that because hands were laid and I fell down. I got up with conditions satisfied automatically. No, you were engraced by that falling. The real anointing for the result has not yet been given. That anointing for the result is waiting when your obedience is complete. That's when it comes on you. The anointing you received, I'm telling you, is the grace to walk in keeping with the conditions that bring that prophecy. Are we together? It's a simple message, but it will work wonders in your life. You will call your brother very quickly and say, sir, please come. I already know that this your journey is heading nowhere. Just sit down. Let us discuss. Why is this family like this? He says, don't worry. Prophecy just came last week. And you will know who to drive away from your house respectfully. By the time he comes again, singing all kinds of songs and saying, it does not work, Abi, let's walk again. Bring 200,000. Bring one chicken bring one bag of rice and then success will imaginarily happen no sir whether a man is fake or real the result in your life will be the same if you don't engage it did you hear what i said whether a prophet is fake or a prophet is real once there is no engaging the conditions that make for actualizing that prophecy your result i guarantee you will be the same it's why many people don't go to church. They went to a herbalist and the herbalist prophesied to them. 
And then they got born again and went to a real man of God. He prophesied to them. The results was the same, zero. And they said, I don't, there's no difference. There will not be difference because the defining factor is not God, not the prophets, but you, the recipient of that prophecy. If God tells you you are going to marry a multi-millionaire, what are you supposed to do? Thanksgiving. Yes, Thanksgiving. But what, what do you do else where you finish Thanksgiving? You go back and start saying, God, help me. A millionaire means many people will hate him. A millionaire means that he may not have time to rest. A wise person begins to war with prophecy. You, God tells you now you will be a millionaire. How do you behave? Buy new clothes. No, sir. That's not how to conform to prophecy. You go back and follow them who through faith and patience. Once you don't see faith and patience, don't follow them. Even if you see the promise, you must see faith and patience to qualify followership. Anybody you see the promise and you don't see faith, meaning there must be a God equation in their life. There must be something in their equation that forced them to need God. Are we blessed? There are many things today that God has brought this ministry into that God did not directly prophesy to me. I'm not one of those men of God that will lie to you that everything we're seeing is what God... Mm -hmm. There are things God did not tell me. I went to the word, Jesus the prophet. I looked at the truths of scripture. I understood the truths of scripture. And I saw the conditions attached to it. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I read and studied how Jesus increased in ministry. Jesus increased in ministry because he first increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. That means for anything to increase around you, something must increase within you. That's a revelation. So I don't move around with the brain of 50 members and the prayer request of 5,000 members. It doesn't work that way. I must upgrade myself spiritually, intellectually to be able to host the kind of increase that I trust God to bring. We only know that a crowd came to Jesus, but Jesus grew. At age 12, when his mates were running around, Jesus was at the temple learning, learning. Are we together? There were a few times in scripture where we saw Jesus around feasts. There were a few times in scripture where we saw Jesus just enjoying himself. That's the portrait of a serious man of God. You, God has called you into ministry. Every movie that comes out, you must see it and watch it. It's all right if you are called into the movie ministry. But if you are called into the word ministry with power and signs and wonders, that's too much luxury. To host the anointing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. Sincerely, I, I tell you the truth as a man of God. I stand from the standpoint of the knowledge that God has given me. And I look at many people and respectfully I can tell you. There are people that results are far from them. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But even when people stand for me to pray for them, I know that what I'm, I'm doing is not the final solution to that problem. And it is painful as a man of God. Not many people will tell you this truth. Because sometimes you see men of God who are victims of manipulating the ignorance of people. The ignorance of people can be used to the advantage of the man of God. There are times that people stand with seeds here sincerely. And I look at them and they say, Apostle, I just emptied my account and my heart is bleeding. What is this for now? He say, Apostle, I know things can turn around in my family. I know the answer is yes and no. Yes, a breakthrough can come. But sustainable financial open doors, no, sir. There are truths you must learn. So I tell the person, okay, go and get koinonia teachings there. And sometimes as I'm talking to them, they start shaking. The moment they fall, they stand up and just laugh. You see some of them calling their loved ones, it's done. No, it's not exactly done. Honestly. 
You see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You must, you must, you must love God and love people to be dishonest. There are very successful people in this ministry, in business, career, and so on and so forth. Every one of them can tell you the different units, the different dimensions that construct themselves together to spell success were adhered to. Where the prophetic was needed, they opened themselves to that dimension. Where prayer was needed, they opened themselves. Where diligence was needed, they opened themselves. Like the ingredients of a, of a meal, everything was combined together to equal success. This is what I'm teaching you. Handing over the responsibility of your destiny to the prophetic alone as the ultimate determinant of your success and not staying with the word of God to understand the conditions will end you in futility and in pain. There were many things that I did not see in my life in spite of the prophetic words I kept receiving. I had to study prophecy and say, look, I have to look at this thing and examine it very carefully. And I began to find out if thou shalt diligently, Deuteronomy 28, please give it to us. Deuteronomy 28, if thou shalt diligently hearken. Look up, please. This is prophecy. The correct approach to prophecy. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. To what? Observe and to Faith is not just hearing what God has said. Faith is doing what God says should be done to see that result. When the rich man came to Jesus, he said, Good master, what must I do to be saved? Apostle, the devourer is coming every time. I can't hold ten naira like this. It's as if there's a bag. Now, let me tell you this. I can stand as a man of God. Please watch this. We're going to pray shortly. I can stand as a man of God and God can show me a revelation. I can look at, for instance, come Sam. It's looking sharp and smart. Now watch this. You see how sharp and smart Sam is looking. Imagine that God opens my eyes. Now the way prophetic things are interpreted, you have to be spiritual and be grounded in the word to interpret them properly. Because God will open my eyes now. Do you know what I will see? I will see this. I will see Sam holding a basket and I will see water being poured in that basket and going down. That can be a template that God is showing me to mean that there is loss and wastage in his life. Are we together now? So he uses because God speaks in pictures. The Bible calls it similitudes. It is not only words. God speaks in pictures. So when I see that now, watch this. I can say, ah, Sam, all that I see, your finance is going down. You say, yes, it's true. Everything going down. You say, yes. You don't cover that basket just with a prophetic word. No. Remember the going down of the finances is a product of many decisions that he is taking. So the real captivity is the financial decisions. His understanding about God's methodologies as far as increase is concerned that affects and influences the decisions he's taking, that now authorizes this opportunist called the devourer to destroy him. So to really help Sam, after prophesying to him, I'll say, Sam, I need to show you the conditions provided for by scripture to stabilize your finance. Number one, let's look at the spiritual laws you are breaking. Number two, let's look at the understanding. Let's look at what you are doing. You are not producing anything. You are not, you are not diligent. You are not exchanging anything for value. Number two, your reputation is making you to make bad decisions that are above and beyond your financial level. Now, you are closing that door permanently. Remember that knowledge and wisdom are stabilizers of destiny. When Sam goes back now, number one, he will pray and rebuke that spirit. But number two, he has now received a dimension of intelligence that teaches him that patience is godly are we together that teaches him that it is all right to move small in life if all you have is a shoe of 300 naira it is not a mockery on your reputation an understanding you had before called it shame 
What you have now received calls it process. Because of that now, when the devourer comes as usual, a fortification has been built through knowledge. Now the prophecy of Sam, God is changing your life, can now happen. Because favor can now come. A system of preservation has come. This is how Sam is warring with this prophecy. Otherwise, Sam can kneel down and say, yes, sir, I will speak to him. The destiny helper will come and pour the same water into the same basket. So here's what happens in church. And I say this to churches and ministries like ours here that are apostolic and prophetic because many times we have little value for the exegesis of the word. Bringing understanding to the saints, bringing illumination because of the charismatism around the demonstration of the spirit and the prophetic. Many times we, we feel embarrassed even as, ma as men of God to settle down and mature believers through the teaching of the word. We would prefer... To just begin to move. Imagine that I, I, I come here now and the power of God begins to break out. I mean, it's easy for you to see that this is that Joshua Selman. You know, the Bible said this is that. So when you bring a visitor, you say, I told you. It will reach 10 minutes. When he comes up, you'll be flying. I, you doubted me. Now you see it happening. But sometimes when you sit down, you see the way believers are embarrassed and ashamed. When the word of God is taught you, you see that each, I need something. When someone shouts, they start laughing, you know, it just, it's like it just eases up because many people do not want to grow. We have taught that prophecy is a shortcut to destiny. No, prophecy is part of the requirements. Listen very carefully. It's part of the systems that were put by the wisdom of God for the building of the saints. Prophecy was not designed to replace obedience to God's set order. If I give you a book and I say study this book on church growth, and success and leadership and administration chances are you are going to throw that book away if i say come to me and i will receive just one touch how many touches one one touch you go back your cathedral will enter another dimension that prophecy will work if you have prepared your way like dotam before you come Dotham prepared his way before the lord if you have prepared your way you have done your assignment Oh, with, with Jesus' joy, that oil will come and set your life in order. Before the fire came, there was already a sacrifice prepared already. The fire would not come. The fire cannot come and be hanging in the air and say, oh, yeah, quickly prepare the sacrifice. You prepare the sacrifice first. There are some of you, the prophecy on your life requires a requisite level of transformation for it to come and since your rate of change is slow it will take a long time so when you say god help me god says i'm i'm ready to do it today if you will change to that dimension what do you understand about pastoring thousands of people what do you understand about the diplomacy of conflict management? What do you understand about leadership and administration? What do you understand about finance? What do you understand about impact and influence? What do you understand about preparing sermons? What do you understand about, about giving people an expression, growth? Just anoint me, oh God, don't worry about anything. Let me tell you what you will, you will produce a place with so many miracles that will depend on you. They will never be able to rise. This is the tragedy of the prophetic and the apostolic ministry if i speak to you sam and by tomorrow someone gives sam a house a car do you think next week sam will come for koinonia with speed sam will not even sit down there he will sit down the altar are you seeing that now and then the day let's assume that this is a branch church the day they now want to transfer me to go to the U.S., what do you think God will be telling Sam at that point? Sam will almost die that he had God. No. 
the emotional connect that comes by reason of the breakthrough he received through my life has made my voice look like the voice of God to him. And most often than not, God did not speak and tell him to go anywhere. He just examined the other replacement they brought. And the lazy nature of the man greeted the congregation. I said, no, I won't sit under this grace. Not at this strategic point of my life. And then he will get up and now begin to travel and go and meet me in the U.S. This guy's destiny has been wrongly attached to me. Are you seeing that now? To the point that this man can never know God by himself. Because the definition of Christianity and breakthrough as proposed by me is that if you do not receive a prophetic word from me, you are grounded, you are dead, you are finished. My name is Joshua Selman and I'm telling you it's a lie. If you take the word of God and believe it and walk within the principles that are kept in the word, I repeat to you that no divination and no enchantment. If you are reading the word properly, there are places in the word that will lead you to go and look for men to pray for you. So you don't have to be afraid of being in error. Are we together? I continue to watch with frustration, sincerely speaking. As prophecies continue to be aborted in the lives of people. And they blame men of God and continue to make negative prophecies to come to pass in their lives. I told you respectfully so, that in my entire paternal lineage sincerely i think aside from my dad by the grace of god i'm the most successful person entire draw the line from anywhere till this can you imagine that kind of thing i saw the spirit of failure and poverty and hardship in my family you can be the greatest of anything but live long enough, you must be the least. When I saw it, number one, I didn't deny it. I knew that the, if you deny it, that's another delay you are causing for yourself. The quicker you admitted it, the, the better for you. Just sit down and look at it and say, ah, okay, this is it. I see that there is problem here. But I made up my mind. I, I love the word of God. I found it too. I found it. See, I have set thee above thrones, dominions, above all of these things, every name that is named. I started seeing something here. Jesus, the prophet, started speaking to my destiny. And I had the foolishness to believe him. The childlikeness to believe him. I believed him so much so that I disbelieved every other thing I saw. And then the Holy Spirit guided me enough to know what are the conditions. What does it take to actualize this? And then he began to show me step by step. And I said, it may be painful, oh God. I may not be able to go through this myself, but supply the grace. And he says, my strength is perfected in your weakness. Look what he has done today. Apostle is lucky. They pray. I remember when they were prophesying that day. Was it not two of us? They prophesied over everybody in a meeting. That's what many people say. That's what many parents say. They look at many great men of God and say, Ah, this guy, I, he was just lucky. I knew the meeting he got born again. The same altar call was made for everybody. One person responded, another person wished. Please make up your mind. Extraordinary fruitfulness will remain a dream. Did you hear what I said? There are people who are engaging with understanding and the results are showing. Extraordinary fruitfulness is not just, it will, December will come and for many people they will find out that nothing like extraordinary fruitfulness happened. But if someone makes up his mind like Timothy, that I'm going to war a good warfare, Prophecy has been sent ahead of me. Lord, what do I need to do? Show me. Your greatest prayer in this season can be, is not just show me your ways. Lord, show me the part I have to play 
show me what do i have to do oh god to change my financial story i've desired fresh oil i have fasted and i've prayed what is the key to the anointing what is the key to a mighty supply of the spirit upon a man i found out the key to keep the holy spirit close to a man because i knew that the nature of the ministry that god had committed to me would require a depth of intimacy and i didn't want theory lord show me what keeps the holy spirit close to a man think of the risk that happens when he becomes far from you and don't let nobody lie to you that he cannot be far from you no huh. spirit of the living god i found him as the secret that he is an ever-present help in time of need but what do i need to do as the recipient thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it let me tell you this i trust god's way one of the secrets of my life is that i trust the way of god most of us have allowed education intellect to corrupt the potency of the ways of god i believe god i believe god i remember when the lord gave instructions here for miracle service foolishly and childishly I did it everything he says to do you do when God declares anything here, we go after him foolishly. I remember a Jimmy's here, he would tell you, when the Lord said to put some of the koinonia messages online, audio, audio message that is not very clear. People online, those of you who are social media experts know that people cannot spend two hours listening to something. They don't have that time. You break it into sections and someone sits down for two hours 30 minutes listening to volumes and volumes of a message my brothers and my sisters it is not let me tell you 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 will be shocked at the power of god that is released and the energy that prophecy carries when you align with it show me a man who has received a word from a prophet of god or has received a word from scripture and obtained grace from God to understand the requirements and do it. I show you a man who you're speaking against, you're cursing against, you're wishing against. It's a waste of time. My confidence today in life and in ministry is on my determination to keep doing the things that allow to host the presence of God. My confidence today is to keep doing the things that continue to bring increase in my life and in the ministry. That way you can stand and beat your chest under God and know you have entered your Sabbath. Satan can come. Challenges can come. But you are as assured of victory as you are assured of Christ sitting on his throne. My life has no fear. I sincerely mean it because I have found out. I found how to commit God. You commit God in the affairs of your life by obtaining grace to know what to do. Jesus himself knew what to do. Buy the ingredients for jollof rice and bring somebody who does not know how to mix them. You have potential for rice. That's prophecy. But that rice will never, never be prepared there. At best, you are going to have nonsense prepared at rice. But then bring somebody who has taken out time to learn how to prepare rice. And then bring the ingredients. And within a short time, as short as an hour, you will see a delicious pot or plate of rice. God is not withholding financial blessings from you. The word has come. If nobody ever spoke it to you, scripture has already told you. 
God is not withholding increase and influence from you. Something about your not understanding his ways may be responsible. The irresponsibility of allowing prophecy work itself, thinking it is spiritual, is very dangerous. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. But when Jesus walked upon the earth, they tried to distract him. And he said, no, 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 no. My meat is to do the will of him that has sent me. Jesus had an option to abort salvation. When he was at Gethsemane, he cried and prayed. Can you take this cup off me? But he said, nevertheless, my will, not my will, but yours be done. And when he took that cross, it was not an angel carrying it. He was carrying it, feeling the weight. The moment he wanted to throw it, he remembered. He remembered. Man will not be grafted through me to be seated. I, 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 if I throw this now, I cannot call many sons to glory. Let me tell you this and I confess to you. There were times in my life when I would be walking through the night and sometimes I would just stop and a joy of the spirit will come over me. Because I saw the days coming. I knew that they were days of joy and rest. And no pain at that point sustained an ability to interrupt my focus. I knew. I was trying to know the Holy Spirit. Knowing the Holy Spirit is hard. Sometimes you want to sleep and he will just tell you to stroll. You will think you are going to pray for one hour. And you will just return to six in the morning. It's the price. While I am doing that, someone is seen in a vision that a young man is going to arise from the north and he will carry the word and the life and the power of Jesus. That prophecy can remain in the realm of the spirit when you do not partner with prophecy. Is God speaking? What have you not done that is making prophecy to not manifest in your life? What have you done to allow a negative prophecy come to pass in your life? Something was said. You saw it in a dream. That the devil wants to oppress you. You saw it in a dream. That an attack was coming to you and your children. You just got up and, and wrote it down. Usually that's what we do. I had a dream. 3.22 a.m. In that dream. I saw knife. I saw all of that. And you didn't do anything about it until six months after that time watch this it will not come as a physical robber your prayer life goes down your finances goes down all helpers leave you what was working stops working that was the dream prophecy seeking expression in your life like hezekiah there's something you would have done about it hey everybody in this house turn every plate upside down I have seen something that is an evil and we can stay the power away. And then you get up and pray. There are many things I see that the devil wants to bring upon people, upon the ministry, upon my life. There are people who send me text messages sometimes, Apostle, this is what I've seen. Pray about the ministry. I don't sit down and cross my legs. While you are sleeping and snoring, I'm awake with God crying and praying. Lord, worship team. Lord, prayer department. Lord, this, there must be increase. People are coming. You are opening up doors. Prophecy. And you say, I saw it too. I saw that by this time, koinonia would have increased. Yes, you saw it, but it was engaged. Is someone getting the teaching this night? Because we are going to pray. You will never see the outstretched arm of God with the assumption that prophecy will work itself out. No. You have a dream and you see people dying in your family. That means there is a word that is bringing death. What do you do about it? You don't wait till somebody dies. Say, ah! And you know, I, I, the other day I told you, you are a witness. What kind of witness is that? You can get up and fast. Fasting is powerful, oh. Yes, listen to me. Our, our Ajebo generation, fasting is important for a man's destiny. You will never be able to do business with God if you cannot turn your plates upside down. 
there are times you need to sit like Elijah. You write the list of all the nonsense you saw that must change. One by one you are praying. What is this I saw about my wife? What is this I saw about my husband? What is this I saw about my business? I saw an attack. I, I'm sleeping and all of a sudden I have a dream. And in that dream I see chains everywhere. In that dream I see people crying. You don't need an interpretation. The character of scripture shows you that mourning is not associated with glory. So already let the Bible interpret that for you that is trouble. You can call somebody. I pray that you will have a good friend. That when you need to change prophecy he will be available with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That you have a good friend that you say, please, can you stay awake for three hours with me today? I'm sensing the spirit of death over my family. I don't know, but I've been sensing it. And the person says, ah, you know, coincidentally, I had a dream of death. It shouldn't put fear. Your consolation is that the most sure word of prophecy has an ability to superimpose everything planned. And you can get up in the night and agree. And both of you are praying. How do you pray? You engage the truth of scripture. You don't pray and say, God, why now? Where are you? Is it that are you still there? That, that's not prayer. That's just lamentation. You begin to pray when you engage the truth of God's word. I choose life. I'm the head of this home. My children may be too small to choose life, but I stand as a covering. I choose life. When they are in school, I choose life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I've taught you this thing. Listen, if you are married in this place, young or old, you are a man. If you don't go around praying and laying hands on your children, you are not a very good ambassador of this ministry. The children should be sleeping. Don't go, you are not a father because they serve you plate and you are sitting down. You get up and carry that regalia of priesthood. You are changing negative prophecies. Your child comes back with a result from second position to twelfth. The other one from 4 to 18. You don't just flog them. No. Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. This is prophecy now. That delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty. This is not might. Lord, you have said my seed shall be mighty. Shekakoska. Manda prakatoseleketa. While you are speaking that word, there are powers, let me tell you, that reside in the heavenlies. You speak and command your money. He told Job, Has thou commanded thy money? You, are, you, are, you sleep and wake up with a dream. Someone injects you with HIV and tells you this is HIV. You get up and say, And you know, I'm feeling the spot. You get up and see marks on your body, physical marks from a dream. And you sit down and just laugh. Laugh. No matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake. As mad as he is, he comes near fire, he will move. I'm not that mad. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind we want to dwell under the shadow of your wing over every challenge in my life blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wing blow blow say Listen, everything you see in your dream is prophecy, seeking manifestation, good or bad. Everything you see in your dream, in your vision is a prophecy, seeking manifestation. You can allow it, you can change it, you can stop it. Inaction is a disaster to a believer. Is what you don't want that you will see happen.
can you open your mouth in one minute and just blast in the spirit Sikete de Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please look at me. One of the demands of priesthood, get my message on priesthood, is that men become men of prayer. Not just prayer in terms of petition, but legislators of spiritual reality. Anything you sit and watch will happen. Did you hear what I said? Listen. There was no record of Job praying for himself. There was no record of any man praying for Job. The devil came through him and through his covering to afflict his family. He prayed for his children. It's true that he feared God. It's true that he ensured evil. But that's not the seed for deliverance. You must know how to pray and engage. Listen, let me tell you. Let the devil get used to you not keeping quiet when negative things come. Don't say I'm not a member of prayer band. I'm not a member of this and that. The times that we live in, let me tell you, it requires men with the spirit of Issachar. He said men who had an understanding of the times. Otherwise, you can confess I shall not die and death will sweep you like a chicken. You must have the eyes that see. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I change everything that is not consistent with the counsel of God concerning my life, my family, my finances. Please pray, pray. I change everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Every prophecy that is not of God seeking manifestation through my life, I reject you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I reject you. I speak the word, the most sure word of prophecy. I shall not die, but leave the head, not the tail, above only, not beneath. Shabarakatosh, Embra Kata 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 Shaparus Kapanya Katani Kata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. I'd like you to find someone to agree with you. Everything God said or you have seen in the spirit that is consistent with God's will and has been hanging by any power of divination within the second heavens. Lift your voice and cry. I command that it must come to pass. I war a good warfare in the realm of the spirit. I decree and I declare the joy, the peace, the prosperity, the blessings, the anointing upon my ministry, upon my life. I declare 
the powers of the heavens holding everything that belongs to me I command the release by the power of the word of God pray few minutes and we are done you are enforcing prophecy Hallelujah. Matthew 18, 18, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Yahweh. Whatsoever thou shalt lose, binding and losing thoughts of allowing and disallowing. Are we together now? Please listen to me. Please listen. Listen. That everything that belongs to me and has been held by any power, it must be released now, not tomorrow. Now, lift your voice and begin to pray. Shakata parokotos, Repetatatos, Koinonia, pray, pray prophecy to manifestation, pray prophecy to manifestation. I command the release in the name of Jesus Christ. He paroko shata lekata rakata barakato sekete Hallelujah 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 Last prayer, and we are done tonight. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, Him I will trust. Continue, please. 
Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. For he shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Five. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that wasted or flyed by day. Listen very carefully. Look at what the Bible is writing here. Next verse. Six. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Seven. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by thy right side. It shall not come nigh thee. Eight. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Listen. That means every time you hear of negative things, someone is dying, they are kidnapping someone, this is happening. In as much as you sympathize with people, you don't do them at the detriment of your own conviction. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If Joshua Selman dies today, it does not mean that the truth of scripture giving life is a lie. So in as much as you sympathize with people, do it lovingly, but not at the detriment of the immutability of God's counsel. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. Until you rise up to possess your possession, you will never, never possess your possession. Jesus was in the wilderness praying and fasting for 40 days. Satan came to tempt him. When he defeated him, he returned in the power of the spirit and his fame went abroad. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there are controlling powers that continue to see that negative prophecies continue to be enforced in our lives. And until the saints understand how to legislate by the spirit, we will continue to be victims of the speakings of men. Last prayer. Father, every prophetic word that came through your word or through your servant upon my life this year, I stand in partnership. I call it Maranatha. Let that prophecy manifest in my life. Lift your voice and pray. The conditions to make it happen. I obtain grace to understand. I obtain grace to walk in keeping with it. Pray. Every prophetic word about my spiritual life, about my finances, about my marriage, about fruitfulness, I receive by the Spirit. I obtain grace. I obtain understanding. I obtain grace. I obtain understanding to know what to do, to know how to partner with prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one testimony and we'll round up tonight. A gentleman sent me a text and he said he was tired of what was happening to him and his family. You know what people call failure at the edge of breakthrough? That you see good things, but just when your hand is about to obtain it, trouble must ferment itself from wherever and come and destroy you. He said he was tired and one night he took out time that if he's to die here he would die and he would pray listen to me true story he was praying he said he had come here with an oil that i prayed for and then you know he went back and applied that oil and he was praying and praying and praying and then it looked like he fell into a trance and according to him he said i walked to him and i told him to lift two of his hands and when he lifted his hands i started removing what looked like maggots out from his hands like that removed or uh, maybe a number of them 
when the gentleman said that happened by the next day he got a job next day he got a job see i've told you time does not change anything you must engage with prophecy you must engage with prophecy don't wait until miracle service when you write your prayer request and bring it here go and write it now and trust god for grace one hour in the night will not stop your sleep we spend three hours worrying wake up in the night every man in koinonia is an intercessor let me tell you if you're a married man in this place and you're not an intercessor you are not a good ambassador learn it wake up and pray put that request on the ground place your hand on it pray it will look like nothing is happening don't mind what you are seeing you just pray forever oh lord thy word is settled let me tell you what will happen when you pray satan will use the sense realm to send images that negate what you are trying to do because he knows that to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace you can even finish that prayer and go back to bed and have a dream that is another negative connotation and you stand up and say but i just wasted my time so these three days prayer and fasting is nothing if it was not bringing an effect with hell the devil would not send you that kind of dream the key is to remain let me tell you this there are certain prayers that you don't pray for one day let me be sincere with you and i don't mean to insult anybody but that understanding that when you pray once is done well i may not have enough experience to challenge that but i can tell you the one i know that when you stay on an issue huh, and you pray and cry jesus prayed he came out saw the disciples went back and prayed the same words the same way three times jesus prayed the bible said looking up to jesus not up to any prophet or any man of god don't pray once and sit down how long do i pray until you see the feast manifest in the earth realm you pray on when you see the the cloud manifest in the earth realm it gives you a sign then you know that those realities have reached otherwise please pray if it takes 21 days pray the grace for the the spirit of gluttony that will not allow you to fast and pray i curse it now in the name of jesus it's a different thing if you have a health issue that may not allow you to pray there are many of us the last time you fasted was during um fasting and prayer that's not healthy for your spiritual life please don't say it does not matter everybody know we know where we are coming from by god's grace our children will not go through this but in between where you are coming from and where you are going you must stand as a bridge and flog this thing out once and for all reject spiritual laziness stay with the word please listen to me let me advise you i say this not to everybody at least i have a responsibility over you please obtain grace from god to sit down in one place this spirit of running up and down from here visiting this running and down i cancel that spirit in this season in jesus name you must obtain grace don't sit in your room gisting gossiping talking open your bible and sit down for god's sake and study more than listening to a message carry your bible carry your notebook and sit down read something spirit of the living god open my eyes and sit down and read there were times when any house you go to you see people even if they are gisting their bible is in front of them but right now is this these are phones everywhere you sit down you are watching film you are watching this i'm not saying it's wrong but life has seasons for god's sake a farmer who is sleeping during rainy season will be foolish to go to the farm during harvest the earth still works on seed time and harvest you are a man of god here reduce your physical exposure and stay in the secret place and pray 
I'll move around and I'm a pastor this, I'm a prophet this, I'm a apostle this. Sit down in one place with the word. Be sound in scripture. Be mighty in power. Most of what you need for your destiny is internal. Sit down. Don't become a busybody roaming here and there. You know, in the afternoon, you are there in the hot sun. You are moving around. You visit this one. I'm not saying visitation is wrong. But you are at a critical point of your destiny. Receive grace to sit down. Study. When you fall asleep and you stand up and you didn't read your Bible, you didn't pray. Don't act like nothing happened. Don't forgive yourself for nothing. No! You stand up. Any time is right for prayer. If you plan to pray in the morning and evening, that's my recommendation for you. I've told you. The morning times and the evening times are powerful times. So said the ministry of Jesus. There are few times Jesus prayed in the afternoon. I'm not saying prayer in the afternoon is wrong. But the activities of life will not give you the kind of focus. Wake up in the morning and pray. Wake up in the night and pray. Some of you as you go back now, don't say it's too late and it's too cold. Receive grace from God. Stretch a little and pray. And don't just pray anyhow. Pray strategically. Pray scriptures. Obtain grace from God. There's no light. You switch on your candle. You switch on your phone. Instead of just watching a movie and then you, 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 watch, you watch spirits to enter your destiny. There is a price for this thing. Let me tell you. God is not a magician. There is a real price. Either you want it or you don't. But if you want it, you mean business. And be aware of distractors. Are we together? There are people who are sincere people. But somehow it looks like because of their weakness, they allow the devil. Just when you want to pray, they just come and knock your house. Have the courage to tell people, please, I would appreciate it if you want to come and see me. I truly would appreciate that you just let me know. I may be studying. Or you can come anytime, but please don't be offended if you come and find me studying. Somebody should not buy a DVD and come to your house to watch and say he's all spoiled. Is that a blessing? What if he comes to meet you doing something? Please take your life seriously. This is about destiny. Make up your mind that this prophetic word must come to pass. Especially this issue of finances. Go and get... There are too many messages that have been preached around the area of finances. Get it and sit with it. Don't just say lay hands on me. Thank God for seed. Thank God for the prophetic But Sit down. I'm a young man. What does it take to be established? Lord, will I end up in this one room forever? The answer is yes until you change it. You sit down. What do I need to know? Are we together? Father, we thank you. We bless you for tonight. You have shown to us that without engaging prophecy, it will fail. And you have shown to us that negative prophecies can be changed. Lord, bring us together as a family of faith and as a body of believers to a point where we exalt the truths of your word. We exalt the immutability of your counsel more than any opinion we choose the word of god as a sure word a more sure word of prophecy we choose the word of god as final authority in all matters over our lives we stake our lives at your word in the name of jesus father i pray for your precious people every condition that needs to be engaged to actualize every prophetic word that is upon their lives. I pray that both the grace and the understanding be revealed to them. In the name of Jesus. That you will act out in faith. And that in the name of Jesus the Lord will honor you. And the Lord will cause your life to be an unending testimony of wonders. Do this oh God and be glorified. For in Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. Let me make an altar call. Last week, because of time, I couldn't make an altar call. A gentleman sent me a text and said, Apostle, I was waiting for an altar call. I really wanted to give my life to Jesus. It broke me so bad. I asked the Lord for forgiveness. 
And so no matter what it is, we'll have to make an altar call. Please keep standing. We're already rounding up. Please keep standing. Let's honor those who will be coming. There are people inside. There are people outside who are saying, Apostle, I desire to hand my life over completely to Jesus. Or I desire to rededicate my life. If there's anyone like that, you're inside, you're outside, you're saying, I need Jesus. Time is gone, but I need Jesus. Please make your way to the front very quickly. Don't be ashamed. Don't wait for anybody to come. Whether you're outside, make your way inside. God bless you. God bless you. Someone is coming. God bless you. Those outside overflow one, overflow two. Please clear the way for them very quickly. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You are standing before Jesus. This is the beginning of a great life, the beginning of a great destiny. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them, protocol. If there's anyone coming, if you're coming, please double up, make it quick, make it quick, our time is gone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you very, very much. God bless you. This is a place where no one at all for any reason and under any condition would condemn you. We're here. We're a family. We love you. We salute your courage for making Jesus Lord of your life. This is why, uh, one of the reasons why he created this platform. It's my joy and my honor to lead you to Jesus, young, old. I want you to lift your right hand and say this passionately and truthfully after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, if you're joining them, please come very quickly so that you participate in the prayer. Come quickly. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word and I declare by faith that you are Lord, you are Savior, you are King over my life and my destiny. I ask for mercy. I ask for forgiveness. I ask for the newness of life. From tonight, I declare that I'm a child of God. I am saved. The spirit of the Lord lives within me. The grace to live a victorious life is mine right now. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you for this once. Precious people you have brought by your spirit and by your grace. They are making commitments and some of them are rededicating their lives to you. You are the only one who can keep us you are the only one who can build us. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of Satan, the power of sin is broken over your life. In the name of Jesus, the grace to walk in victory is released upon you right now. I declare that from tonight you go forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for this decision. Um, there's someone waving his hands. All of you, please look at me in concert. I just want you to follow this gentleman. He will lead you to a group of people who will just talk to you on our behalf very briefly. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.